The following is the Mountaineer Sports Network presentation. The West Virginia Mountaineers and the Virginia Tech Hokies from Morgantown, West Virginia. Brought to you by Strohs, from one beer lover to another. By Magnet Bank, the right bank in the right place at the right time. By Rich Equipment Company, home of quality Komatsu earth moving equipment in West Virginia. By your Mountaineerland Chrysler Plymouth dealers, the competition knows it's the team to beat. By Hex Discount Stores, serving West Virginia for over 25 years. And by Frito-Lay, the makers of the cheddar flavored and sour cream flavored Ruffles potato chips. Hi everyone and welcome to Morgantown, West Virginia, Mountaineer Field where the sun has peaked out from behind the clouds and it's a great day for college football as Virginia Tech gets set to take on our West Virginia Mountaineers. I'm Tom Ease in company with Fred Wyan and of course Fred is familiar to many of you fans across the state of West Virginia from his playing days here in the early 50s and of course he's been a National Football League referee going into his 20th year and Fred you've seen a lot of football and you've seen a lot of important football games and this is an important football game today for West Virginia. Tom, this is a real important game for West Virginia. They've come off of sort of a shaky start, and they've had a lot of injuries. Mm -hmm. It's something that they're really going to have to work hard on. VPI is always a big game, a lot of rivalry, and I think it's going to be a tough one for them. This is a pivotal game for, for West Virginia if they want to go ahead and do something as far as a, a major bowl bid at the end of the season and get a winning streak going. But it's going to be tough, Fred, because Don Nealon told me the other day he's never had an injury bug like he has this year. Well, I think they started off this year, they were a little young in the offense, and then they got a lot of people hurt. And when you have that combination, they really never get a chance to get the flow together and to get working. I read uh, this week that they sort of feel like it's the first week that they've had a chance maybe to get together and get things moving the way they thought they would. First week that the offensive line has been together since the two days in preseason, and uh, the linebacking core has to be a concern today for Don Neal, and he's had uh, one player leave because of suspension and a lot of injuries back there. Well, they've had a lot of injuries. They've got new players. The new players have been doing well, but then they've had some injuries. So I think they're probably down to maybe the second or third team in some of those positions. You just hope that this is the time when your depth is really holding up and you've done a good job recruiting. Uh, they'll need it today. West Virginia 2-1-1. One, and one. The Virginia Tech Hokies come in 1-3, and three, but they're coming off a big win against Syracuse. They will be tough today, and we'll be back with the starting lineups and the kickoff of today's game from Mountaineer Field in Morgantown in just a moment. Welcome back to Mountaineer Field in Morgantown. It's homecoming day. Partly cloudy skies. Temperature about 57 degrees. I'm Tom Mees with Fred Wyant. Fred, always a special feeling on homecoming day, especially when the old grads come back to campus and the Pride of West Virginia marching band on the field now. And you see the players massing behind the band. They can't wait to get out there and perform for this capacity crowd today. Well, it is a special day, Tom. And this is uh, brings back all those great memories of the time when anybody was in school here at the university. It's an exciting day. Got to bring back memories for you, your quarterbacking days in uh, the early 50s? It brings back a lot of them. The old Mountaineer field, they, uh, they had 35,000 there, and everybody was on the field with you. All right, here come the Mountaineers. This is a pivotal game as the captains are now meeting at the center of the field. We touched on it briefly in the opening, Fred, but... Don Nealon feels this is the game that with the three-game road stint against Boston College, Penn State, and Virginia coming up over the next four weeks, this is the game they got to win, get the week off, get people healthy, and get a, you know, a real go-for-it attitude from here on in. Yeah, and it's really important, Tom, with that week coming off. If they can win this week, then you can imagine two weeks of coming off of a win and the feeling that it gives you and getting healed as opposed to losing one after tying one after losing one. It, it would be a downer, and I think that this is, as you say, it's a critical game for them. They have to win this one. Coach Don Nealon huddling with his troops on the sideline. Don, if he wins today, would tie Ira Rat Rogers for second place in the all-time win list by head coaches here at West Virginia, and uh, that's some good company. Good company. Our old great coach, uh, Pappy Lewis, is the uh, top guy, I think, with 58 wins, and but uh, that puts him in some great company. The captain's still uh, meeting at the center of the field. I don't know what the Hokie mascot is doing out there, but he's out there with the referees and the toss of the coin. 
is coming up and West Virginia will go from right to left defend the goal from right to left and will kick off to start the ball game so Virginia Tech the Hokies will get their hands on the football and when they do you know they have a couple of senior quarterbacks Virginia Tech does and Todd Greenwood who had his best game in his college career last week at Syracuse and he's backed up by Mark Cox Greenwood number 14 Cox number eight anytime you have senior leadership at a skill position you all know about the quarterback it can cause trouble for a defense well I think so and I've always felt this way a team to succeed has to have a quarterback that's doing the job and uh, all the great teams have uh, great quarterbacking and two seniors uh, over 50 percent coming off a great win uh, this could be a tough day we'll have to wait and see when West Virginia gets the ball a lot of speculation over who will start today the popular conception is that Tony Rita who came in and did so well in the second half against Pitt last week will start but Don Nealon told me yesterday point blank that both Rita he plans to get Rita and Tally in the game Tally is a youngster he wants to bring along. I know he wants to not give up on the kid. He wants to instill confidence. But on the other hand, you need to win ball games along the way, and Rita came in and played well last week. The main thing is that you've got to win, and whoever gets you there. All right, Charlie Bauman is teeing the ball up. The wind will be a factor today. It's blowing, I guess, between 15 and 20 miles an hour. Bauman will be kicking into that wind. The Hokies of Virginia Tech are sending back Eddie Hunter as one kickoff return man. Also going back there, Terrence Howell. So it's Hunter and Howell standing at the goal line. The ball momentarily blowing off the tee and Ballman placing it back on. That's sort of unusual. Uh, Tom Hunter's their leading rusher, too. They must have a lot of confidence in him back there. Yes, Eddie Hunter is to the lower part of your screen. And the fans are ready, all 62,000, and Charlie Baum and the Mountaineers are ready. The Hokies of Virginia Tech are ready, and here we go. Mountaineer football, the Mountaineer Sports Network. And the kickoff comes to Hunter, five yards deep in the end zone. He takes the advice of his compatriot who says, down that football, and he does. That was Hunter back there with Tim Dudley to receive the kickoff. Dudley, a last-minute replacement. So first and ten for Virginia Tech at their own 20-yard line. The Hokies will go on offense, and they'll have Todd Greenwood, number 14, at quarterback. The running backs will be Ernie Jones and Eddie Hunter. Donald Snell will be one end. There you see the backfield. Split end Donald Snell, tight end Terrence Howell. Desmar Becton will be the wing back. Offensive line, Plank, Thomas, Johnson, Mir, and Cruz. First and 10 for the Hokies with a 1-3 and three record coming off a 10-point win at Syracuse one week ago. And the handoff for very negligible yardage goes to Ernie Jones. Ernie Jones is brought to the turf after about a two-yard gain on that play. The West Virginia defense, Hunt, Grant, and Herzog are the front three. The linebackers, John Kemp, Derek Christian, Van Richardson, and Robert Pickett. A lot of changing in the linebacking core for Don Nealon. Jones, Holly, Curtis, and Willie Edwards are the starting secondary. Second down and eight. Gain of two yards on the first play of the game for Ernie Jones. The pitcher goes to Eddie Hunter, and Hunter is over the 25 to the 26-yard line before Derek Christian brings him down. Fred, the linebacking play today going to be a key for West Virginia because we've had a lot of shuffling there, and I do see Freddie Small starting today, and that's a bit of an upset in itself. Well, it is. It's the key, especially with the alignment that they use, Tommy. It's the key that their linebackers be well and, and mobile, and... Uh, We'll have to watch this afternoon to see whether that's going to take place. Well, Holloway is out. Matt Smith has been shifted to an outside linebacker spot, and Wes Turner, as you may have read, is no longer with the team. Meanwhile, on the delay, they give us Daddy Hunter, and he's got a Virginia Tech first down, and a lot more. Hunter over the 40 to the 41-yard line before Larry Holly, who's uh, playing hurt himself, brings him down. So first and 10 for the Hokies of Virginia Tech. As Eddie Hunter, junior out of Oxon Hill, Maryland. Nice game. Here's a good call. Uh, the passing down and he goes back they make good blocks Hunter makes a beautiful cut here breaks to the outside you see him dip his shoulder a little bit a little bit of limp leg and uh, he picks up a lot of great yardage certainly does first and ten for Virginia Tech at their own 42 yard line the pitch out goes to Maurice Williams number two the tailback Williams is brought down after a gain of around four or five Travis Curtis free safety brings him down Travis a junior out of Potomac Maryland and they'll mark the ball over the 45 between the 47 and 48 yard line so a gain of around five on the play they had two great blocks on that play uh the uh block 
block back on the linebacker, and the lead uh, blocker came out and made a good block. They got some great yardage on it. Saw a shot a moment ago of quarterback Tony Rita getting set to come into the ball game for West Virginia. Under pressure is Greenwood. He rolls right, gets the ball away, wide open for the touchdown. Touchdown to Desmar Becton, the wingback. As Todd Greenwood rolled right under heavy pressure, somebody blew coverage somewhere, and Desmar Becton was wide open. Well, what happened, Tom, is even though you can see here, he was under a lot of pressure, but look how much time he had. He fakes, he fakes, he runs around, nobody gets to him, and now everybody lets the guy get behind him, and it's an easy touchdown. Well, Unfortunately, you know, that line play has to be a little better. Yeah, I tell you, Willie Edwards, who is starting today, freshman, was upfield that time, and it, when that ball was in midair, he turned around like, uh-oh, I blew the coverage. We don't know if it was him, but the extra point is no good. It hits the left upright and bounces away. So some consolation for the Mountaineers. Virginia Tech scores first with 12.48 to go in the first quarter. We'll be right back to Mountaineer Field. The score, Virginia Tech 6, West Virginia nothing. Welcome back to Mountaineer Field in Morgantown. I'm Tom Mees with Fred Wyatt. Fred, uh, the crowd here a bit stunned on homecoming day as Virginia Tech getting on the board first with that 52-yard, I guess officially 53-yard touchdown pass. But now it's time for the Mountaineers to regroup and for Tony Rita to get something started in a hurry. Yeah, they're going to have to because the last, I think the last three games, Tommy, they haven't, they've only had one first down total for three games in the first quarter. And uh, they can ill afford to get a slow start here today. Tony Jackson, number 16, is back in single safety at the goal line to receive the kickoff. Handling the kickoffs for Virginia Tech, number 9, Alan Talbot. So Virginia Tech on the board early, has the wind in their favor. And uh, from their standpoint, getting on the board early helps take this big crowd out of the football game. But Don Nealon hopes to generate some offense here in the first quarter of play. 6-0 our score, and it's a squib kick. Don't know if it was on purpose or if he just missed it. Coming up with a football for the Mountaineers is Brad Metheny, or rather Metheny, a defensive back, and Brad lugs it on up to the 40-yard line. Brad, I guess, uh, we'll never know. We'll have to read the mind of the kicker, Talbot, whether he did that on purpose or whether he just missed the kick. Well, I think VPI is pretty confident in their, uh, of course, their uh, defense, and uh, it's uh, uh, sometimes they'll cut that ball short. WVU offense, Rita, Pecan, and Hollifield in the backfield. Receivers Phillips, Basil, and White in the offensive line is really together for the first time all year. Josiak, Pounds, Griffith, Jolliffe, and Scott Saylor. The give is to Hollifield, and Hollifield is met and stopped for no gain by Jamel Adjami. Sophomore from Hollywood, Florida. It'll be second down and ten. I'm sorry, Fred, go ahead and finish your thought there. You had it going in second. Well, again. one thing about this now, uh, even though this is a young defense, last week they uh, shut Syracuse down with 150 yards total. And as you can see right there, there were, just wasn't anything. Nothing at all up the middle. It'll be second down and ten. Robert White and Grant Bell both out wide for West Virginia. But the give again is to Hollifield. Hollifield finds a seam this time over the 45 to the 46-yard line. Call it a gain of five before Carter Wiley, the free safety, brings him down. The uh, third down and about five yards to go for the Mountaineers. Virginia Tech defense up front. The front four, Talafiro, Moranta, Webb, Coleman, and Roan. Actually a front five with the linebackers, Ajemi and Nelson, and the defensive backs, Fitz, Harris, Wiley, and Hayes. It is third down and officially four yards to go. Mountaineers have to get to just short of midfield for first down. Got a break on that kickoff after the Virginia Tech touchdown being squibbed and returned to almost the 40-yard line. Rita, number 10, straight back to pass. Got the time, got the first down. It's Hollifield, and Hollifield is in the Virginia Tech territory inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. Paul Nelson brings him down, junior linebacker. You can see Tony is a pure backup passer, Tommy. He sets up, nice setup, and a look at that toss. Wide open, but a nice toss in there for that first down. Hollifield's a great runner once he gets the ball. He's very elusive indeed. Robert White split wide to the top of your screen. Calvin Phillips to the bottom. Rita 
Gives it to Hollifield, and Hollifield fools the defense for a few moments, but he's closed down after about a three-yard gain by a host of Hokies inside the 40-yard line. Morgan Roll, number 89, put him down. Defensive end. West Virginia has to establish a running attack that at least that three yards every time. If they can get three yards every time, the old Bud Wilkinson used to say three <laughs> yards times four is 12, and that's a first down. And a lot of other coaches say first down is the most important down in your drive because it establishes everything else. It does. Second down and seven. Gain the three just inside the 40-yard line of the Hokies. Hollifield hit initially for no gain but spins for a couple of yards. And there's a flag on the play. Paul Nelson makes the tackle again. Flag was dropped on the defensive side of the line of scrimmage, but we'll wait for the official word. The official, we understand, does have a stadium microphone. Let's see if it works. You like those things, don't you, Fred? We don't. Oh, holding on West Virginia. That's a big one. Yeah, that's a very costly one. It really is. Penalties, of course, a lot of yellow flags last week for both Pitt and West Virginia in that game here at Mountaineer Field. Yes, that's what I understand, and that's a that's a tough one. That kills you drive. Now Rita has to come back and and go for the pass. But the nice thing about it is that's the best thing. Holding, blue, ten yards, second down. All right, ten yard holding penalty pushes the ball back to the what, to the Virginia Tech 46 yard line. Mountaineers have to get to the 33 for a first down, so it is second down and 13 yards to go. Second and 13. Robert White brings in a play from Don Nealon. He's split out wide to the top of the screen, and they're going long for White. He's open. Got it. Robert White, first and goal to the three-yard line. Very simple pattern, Fred, the old fly pattern. He just outran two defenders. He did, and Tony laid the ball in there just perfect. The key, here we go. Tony's back. Look at this setup. Such great balance, throws the ball, and that's a great catch and a great throw, and that's what West Virginia has to have. They have to have Tony Rita doing the job out there to win. Carter Wiley was badly beaten on that play, as was Ray Fitz. So it is first and goal for the Mountaineers on the Hokie three-yard line. Big, big play by Rita to Hollifield, and Hollifield is in for the touchdown. Touchdown, West Virginia, and the game is tied at six. I was about to say Rita to Robert White, and then Rita hands off to Hollifield. He goes in for the score. Nice blocking in there. They open the hole, and Hollifield does the thing that he does best, and that's cutting, and he's very elusive, and he goes in for the score. Carter Wiley tried to bring Hollifield down, but he didn't even touch John until he was well into the end zone. Scott Saylor with a good block. That Great time. block on that one. Open that hole up. Great block. So we're tied at six as the Mountaineers come back with a 60-yard drive. The big play, the pass play from Rita to White. Hollowfield gets the touchdown. Charlie Bauman trying to give the Mountaineers the lead. The snap is down. The kick is up. And it is perfect with 9.37 left to go in the first quarter. There's excitement in Morgantown as the Mountaineers have come back to take the lead. Our score, West Virginia 7, Virginia Tech 6. Back with more in a moment. Tom Meads with Fred Wyatt back at Mountaineer Field in Morgantown where the crowd, the sellout crowd of over 62,000. Well, he's in a little bit more festive mood than they were about 15 or 20 minutes ago. And, you know, that is the first touchdown for West Virginia in the first quarter since the Louisville game. And also the, the most first downs, obviously, they've racked up in a drive since the Louisville game. Don Nealon has to be encouraged. Well, I think the thing, Tony Rita looked very calm, cool out there. Let him down, didn't let that penalty bother him at all, came back and made a perfect throw and a great catch. And that's the type of thing that kind of sort of spurs the team on. Tony Rita, of course, is a senior out of Mount Lebanon, Pennsylvania, suburb of Pittsburgh. Charlie Bauman back to kick off for the Mountaineers. Eddie Hunter is one man back there. Also back there is Tim Dudley, number 24. It is sort of a knuckleballing uh, kickoff, and it is taken by Eddie Hunter. Hunter the 10, 15. Hunter fumbles the football. Virginia Tech has it at the 25. That thing was bouncing all over the place. Let's see if we can see who came up with it for the Hokies. Picked it out of midair. It is clear possession to Virginia Tech. I know they're fighting about it now, but give it, give it up, boys. Virginia Tech ball. 
This copyrighted broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by West Virginia University through the Mountaineer Sports Network solely for the entertainment of our viewing audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the pictures, description, and accounts of the game without the express written consent of the Mountaineer Sports Network is prohibited. The announcers on this broadcast are employed by the Mountaineer Sports Network. Greg Brooks, the reserve tight end, was Johnny on the spot for Virginia Tech recovering that fumble. And here is Hunter on first down. He's got lots of room. He's got a first down up to the 40-yard line. And Virginia Tech comes right back as Eddie Hunter rambles to the 46 before Andrew Jones and Larry Holly bring him down. So the Hokies come right back at you. Well, here you can see what a big hole, nice block on the linebacker, and Hunter is an excellent runner. And he gets outside. They, they, they've got to contain him. Well, Hunter, big junior out of Oxon Hill, Maryland, had a good day last weekend against Syracuse, and he gets a pitch out around the left end again. Goes outside for three or four yards. Right out of bounds over there by Brad Hunt, sizable young sophomore from Ripley, West Virginia. There you see Hunter, 282 yards, only one touchdown, but uh, that's a pretty good rushing average. About a, yeah, about five yards a carry, and that is great. Gain of three on that last play. It'll be second down and seven. Second and seven. Here's the give to Hunter again. Eddie Hunter short of the first down, about the 48-yard line. Van Richardson, senior out of Bethel Park, PA, comes up to make the stop. I think our linebackers are going to have to play a little more under control in there. They're coming, the block's coming in. They're trying to take the block, and they take themselves out of the play. And they're going to have to play a little more under control to keep Hunter in the backfield or for short yardage. Well, it's third down and one. Full house backfield behind the quarterback, Todd Greenwood. Greenwood keeps and pitches out, and falling down is Maurice Williams, short of the first down. Oh, he had the first down. He just fell on the turf. Andrew Jones was there to make sure. But actually, Maurice Williams lost the yard. Bad break for uh, Bill Dooley's Hokies of Virginia Tech. Yeah, it's early. They've got to punt the ball, and that first down would have put him into West Virginia territory. Uh, going back for the Mountaineers, as usual, is Tony Johnson to receive the punt. David Cox is in the punt for Virginia Tech. Now, Cox has been booming the ball last year. This year, his average is down to only 35 yards, actually less than 35 yards kick. About seven yards down. That's a pretty good drop. Johnson calls for a fair catch. He drops the football, but he falls on it, I think. Who's got it? Virginia Tech says they do, and they do. The official says that Johnson's muff, if you will, was recovered by Virginia Tech. Well, you know, the kick was interesting. A uh, guy with that kind of experience, they worked so hard on it. If we, if we get a chance to see it here, you'll notice that ball floated. Here we go. You'll notice it's floating with that wind up there, and it's difficult for him to catch, and he didn't get a good catch on it, and there they are. Number 36 gets that ball for VPI. That's Carter Wiley, defensive back, makes the fumble recovery, and it's first and 10 Virginia Tech at the Mountaineer 17, or make that 18-yard line. So Tech, which got a bad break on the previous running play, gets a good break here, but here's a loss. Matt Smith for West Virginia comes up to nail the ball carrier. David Everett. Smith and Brad Hunt put the stops to him. Matt Smith is just one heck of an athlete. Well, see, the line does a great job here. Keeps everything uh, in containment, and then the linebackers come in because those are the skilled positions. The defensive line has to play tough in there for West Virginia's defense to function properly. Loss of three. That uh, give us to the running back, Eddie Hunter. So Hunter was stopped. For loss of three, second down and 13. Greenwood rolls right. Got plenty of time. Got a receiver, but the man drops the ball. Matt Smith was the defender on the play. And the pass was intended for Eddie Hunter, who had floated out of the backfield into the right flat. But Smith was right there. Pretty good defense that time, uh, especially by the defensive back. He didn't give him much room. Bill Dooley, who has had a very successful tenure at Virginia Tech going for his 50th win at Tech today if he should pull this off. Yes, that'll put him up there as one of the leaders uh, as far as coaches down in that area. You can see over nearly 120 victories in his 19 years as a head coach. His opposite number, Don Nealon, hoping his Mountaineer defense can hold strong here. Third down and 13. Backs in the eye formation. Play fake. Greenwood is under a rush. Look out! Back! 
Brad, Brad Hunt came from behind and pulled him down. That's what West Virginia needs, Tom. They haven't had that. Here we go again. You can see Hunt plays. He's coming from clear over the other side. Uh -huh. Does a well, that's great effort. Oh, he never given up. He never gave up. And he's great he, effort. He's a load, Fred. He's got to move a lot of weight around. That's right. He's about 300. Meanwhile, Virginia Tech lining up for the field goal. The kick is good, just over the crossbar. Just over the crossbar for the Hokies as Tom Terracani puts it through. So although the great defensive play is made, Virginia Tech has regained the lead. 6.20 to go in the first quarter. Our score, Virginia Tech 9, West Virginia 7. Welcome back to Mountaineer Field, everyone. I'm Tom Ease along with Fred Wyatt. Tara Kenny nailing that field goal. He was only two for four coming into the game. It was a medium range field goal of about 35 yards and he put it through, but just barely, Fred. That thing, the official, you've been down that situation before. You gotta look up and see if it just gets over the bar and it just made it. It was a good kick and I think probably that he was uh, had the wind, a little crosswind there, but that's what happens when you make that mistake, and you can't make a mistake uh, against a good football team because they'll score, and that, that three points, now we're behind. Well, but let's look on the bright side. Didn't cost them a touchdown. The defense played tough, and they gave up but the three points. So 6.20 to go here in the first quarter. Now there's trailing by two. And in the kickoff is Alan Talbot. Now last time he squibbed one, whether intentional or not, I don't know. But West Virginia got great field position out of it. Tony Johnson is back again at the goal line. He probably feels, well, I know he feels worse than anybody about the last three points Virginia Tech got because it was a result of his muff on the punt. It is a short kickoff initially handled by Andre Johnson. Finally, here comes Tony Johnson up to the 25-yard line. And he is brought down there by Eric Hayes, right cornerback. So first and 10 for the Mountaineers at their own 25-yard line. Not bad field position. Say it's uh, it's becoming interesting on the kickoffs and punts back there. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> that has got to make Don Nealon's blood pressure get a little bit higher. Yeah, anytime you try to put the, your most sure-handed person back there, and when they don't get it, it really <laughs> gets a little scary. Backs in the eye formation. Remember, John Gay, fullback, is not playing today with a shoulder injury to give us the hollow field, the tailback in the eye formation. He's up over the 25 to the 28, a gain of three. Chris Pecan is in there instead of John Gay today at the fullback spot. Mark Webb and Morgan Rowan made the tackle for Virginia Tech. Crowd trying to start a wave here in Morgantown. Huh? We're a ways from the nearest beach, aren't we? We're a long ways <laughs> from, the, from the Seattles and some other places where the wave originated. A lot of stunning going on at Virginia Tech formation. They give again to Hollifield. He gets to the outside. Hollifield's got some speed, but he is brought down, although he gets the first down up to the 40-yard line. Brought down just over the 40 at the 40-and-a-half-yard line. 36 made the tackle. That's Joel Beckel. I'm sorry. 36, uh, Carter Wiley. Carter Wiley made the stop. Hollifield is just superb when he goes into the line. He has such a nice move with his legs, and... You notice that he just sort of jigs around a little bit there and then breaks to the outside for that first down. West Virginia possesses excellent team speed on offense. When you get a guy on the outside loose, look out. Here's a pass from Rita over to Calvin Phillips, and it's right through Phillips' hands. It'll be second down and 10. Brian Josiak comes over and says, that's okay. You're not going to drop too many of those. Can't afford to drop too many of those. They've got to have those especially with the speed that they have. You always have a chance for somebody to break away. That's what hurt West Virginia against Maryland. For whatever reason, the receivers were not able to hang on to the ball. Some people say that Talley was throwing the ball in there too hard. Others say that they should have been caught. For whatever reason, drop passes hurt them. That pass should have been caught. Yes, it should have. Second down and 10 from the 41. In motion goes Phillips. And the give on the draw play to Hollifield. He's got some room. Don Hollifield of the 47-yard line closed down Carter Wiley, a very active man in the early going, and Lawrence White closed him down before he can pick up the first down yardage. I thought he had it for a second there. Big hole, as we'll see here. Here we go. Tony goes back, lays the ball in. Hollifield on the draw has a nice block, but watch him. He has such great moves in there. 
two people have a shot at him, and he picks up nice yardage. Chris, Chris Pecan really delivered a nice block for Hollywood. Yeah, I like Chris. He does a real good job in there. He's just steady, and, uh, and that's what they need to have. Third down and two, and Reed is going straight back to throw. No ifs, hands, or buts. He's got the first down to Hollifield, who's a busy man today. First and ten at the Hokie 45-yard line. So Rita didn't even hesitate on third and two. Lawrence White and Dwight Osbrooks made the stop. They're trying to get the ball in Hollifield's hands every chance they get. He Quick turnaround, getting the ball. There's a... One hit, miss, and he picks up another three or four yards. Hollowfield, a junior out of Romulus, Michigan, ran for three touchdowns and 252 yards coming into this game and had 11 catches for 99 yards as a receiver before today. Here's Tommy Gray. Gray gets by the initial wave of tacklers, tries to turn the corner, but he's bumped out of bounds at the 42 after a gain of two or three yards. Ray Fitz, left cornerback, comes up for Virginia Tech to make the stop. That was a fine defensive tackle. Yeah. Sure was. They, uh, West Virginia's offensive line is doing a lot better this week than I think they've had for about three weeks. But if you want to see a good tackle, right there is good position and a great tackle on Tommy Gray. He didn't go for any fakes. He stayed right at home, and when the opportunity presented itself, he locked his arms, and Gray was history. 26 carries, 138 yards, and the flag on the play is going to move West Virginia back into their own territory. Looks like another holding here, Fred. I'm afraid so. Well, no. The blue, still first down. Actually, more damaging than a hold. It's a clip, 15-yard penalty instead of 10. 15 yards, first and 25. That's a tough one to start with. Back to the Mountaineer 42-yard line. They have to get down to the Virginia Tech 35 for a first down. Rita almost slips. Now recovers over the middle of the gray, but he's not going to get very far. Gray is actually stopped short of midfield at the Mountaineer 49. Lawrence White makes the stop. What a seven-yard pickup. It was a nice play. The one thing, I, after watching Tony out there today, I have a feeling that he can pick up that, that 25 yards. He really has been calm out there and done a real fine job in passing the ball. Well, second and 15, he picked up. 10 of those yards, and that's the way you don't want to go for it all once. You want to pick it up bit by bit by bit. Second and 15 for the Mountaineers from their own 49-yard line. Single back behind Rita. He goes out in the flat, and Rita threw that one away. He was intending it for Grantis Bell, but coming over on the coverage for Virginia Tech was number 27, Alan Harris, and I think Tony saw him coming and said, I'm not going to have this picked up. Yeah, he put the ball up high and out of bounds. Tony does a good job in there. He's got a nice head on him, and, the, and that was uh, just a real fine play. Good heady play. Now that'll bring up a third and 15. And coming in with the play is Robert White. As Don Nealon has been alternating wide receivers on every play. Those guys are going to lose a lot of weight just running back and forth between the huddle. He's got that good speed. <laughs> Phillips, Calvin Phillips goes in motion. The play fake, but Virginia Tech expecting pass all the way. They get it out in the flat to Gray, and Gray is got well short of the first down at the Hokie 45-yard line. Make that Phillips, Calvin Phillips. We have another it. penalty, Tommy. Allen Harris made the stop. Flag on the play, and West Virginia says, hey, hooray for us. It's against the other side. Let's listen in. Defensive holding. That should be an automatic first down. Well, that's really a crusher. You got a team back third and 15. You stop them 10 yards short of the, what they needed for the first down. And because of defensive holding, they get it anyway. Now you know why coaches get gray hair. Absolutely. <laughs> West Virginia has to punt. Now they've got first down. Actually, the ball is at the 40-yard line. Defensive holding. White. 10 yards. First down. First and 10 for the Mountaineers at the 40-yard line of Virginia Tech, and the fans here in Morgantown love it. Actually, it's turned out to be a pretty good day. We heard all sorts of dire weather predictions, but it's perfect. At 55 to 60 degrees and partly cloudy skies. The give on first down is to Tommy Gray. Gray tries to turn it upfield, but he is met and met hard after a gain of three yards. Lawrence White and Eric Hayes come up to make the stop. Alan Harris also in there. I always like to see Tommy Gray go inside. I like to see Hollifield 
be able to get a lot more room. Tommy's a sort of a slashing runner, and uh, they just spread it out on him. He doesn't have the moves like Hollifield to go outside. Tommy Hamilton now into the tight end for the Mountaineers. Gain of three, second down and seven. Rita straight back. Looking over the middle now to the right side and incomplete intended for Calvin Phillips. That ball led him just a bit too far. It'll be third and seven. But they had plenty of time to pass the ball and the, the pass was just a little bit in front and high. Uh, it's a shame because had he caught that ball, he might have gone all the way. Two he minutes. In, I'm sorry, Fred. Uh, he was in the seam and uh, had a good shot at it. Two minutes left to go here in the first quarter. 9-7, Virginia Tech on top. Third and seven in the crowd. Urging the Mountaineer offense on. Reed on the delay to Hollifield. Hollifield, though, isn't fooling anybody as he's dragged out at the 34-yard line. Penalty flag, and we could have a face mask on the man that made the tackle, Dwight Osbrooks, and that would be another costly penalty. Costly penalty be a first down. Let's see. I don't, I don't know whether he grabbed him or whether it just went across him. We'll take a look here. See if we can tell if there was, well, there's one reach. And there you go. Oh, that's, that's not a face mask. Uh, he went across his face, and, and uh, he has to grab it and pull it, and he didn't do that. Well, all I but know it's is, a judgment. Yeah, it's, it's a penalty being marked off, and it'll give the Mountaineers a first down. Fifth match, defense. Five yeah, yards. during the live play, first down. and this is what the official has to go by, it looked a lot worse than it really was. But he doesn't have the benefit that we do of the, of the replay. That's absolutely right. He has to see it, and he makes a split judgment in there. It's a tough play, and... Uh, now we got a break. First got and, a break. First and ten at the 29. Give it to Hollifield. Hollifield down to the 26-yard line. Horatio Maranta and Morgan Rowan on the tackle. So it'll be second down and seven. This has been a game of breaks so far. Penalties going for and against both sides. Fumbles, muffs, taking advantage of breaks. And so far, everybody's taking advantage of every break they've been given. <laughs> That's right. Well, let's hope West Virginia can take advantage of this one. Read it to Hollifield, and Hollifield is getting a lot of work today, but zeroing in on him was Lawrence White, sophomore from Blackstone, Virginia. Very, very active today. Stops Hollifield for no more than a yard gain and another throwing situation. But the difference now is, Fred, that if you don't get the first down, you'll probably be in Charlie Bauman's field goal right now. I think, uh, I think Charlie can probably hit it from there. Although he would have to go against the cross win. But let's deal with that when we come to it. Rita got all sorts of time and looking for Calvin Phillips. That ball could not have been caught. It was thrown low. And Eric Hayes was there on the coverage. And here comes Charlie Bowman. I'm not sure that the uh, that the pass pattern was not a little more of a comeback. It, it looked like he was thrown to a spot, and uh, he either threw it wide or he or the the receiver didn't come back for it. Well, Don Nealon was talking to Calvin Phillips when he came over, and uh, maybe he was explaining where he should have been on that pass pattern. We can only speculate. Line of scrimmage is the 26. They're setting it up, angle to the left at the 33. Be a 43-yard attempt for Charlie Bauman. His longest is 35 this year. He's 4 of 5 on field goal attempts, as you see. So, this would be his longest field goal of the year. Snap is perfect. The kick is up. It's long enough, and the kick is no good. Hitting the crossbar and bouncing back. So, the attempt is no good. West Virginia is turned aside with 37 seconds left in the first quarter. Virginia Tech hangs on to that 9-7 to lead, Fred. That was a tough break for Charlie Baum. It was a tough break. It was... Uh... He had plenty of leg into it. I, it always amazes me how they hit those anyway. That's not <laughs> much space out there. There's a kicker for the Denver Broncos named Rich Carlos who has hit about a half a dozen of those in the last year and a half. And you, if you're telling me he's trying to do that, I'm telling you you're wrong. <laughs> Virginia Tech takes over at their own 26-yard line, first and 10. Greenwood, the quarterback, leads him out and hands the man hands the ball to their, uh, their workhorse today, Eddie Hunter. And Hunter is stopped up near the 30-yard line by Derek Christian. Inside linebacker. And Freddie Smalls also in on that play. Smalls is playing today, but despite the fact he has a very tender ankle, told me yesterday he couldn't cut very well on it. 
Well, the tough, good players sometimes learn to play hurt, and that's what you have to do. This is a critical game, and, a, and it's uh, admirable that Freddie's in there. Pick up a four in the play. It'll be second down and six when we, re well, hold it. It's eight seconds left to go, and a timeout has been called by the West Virginia Mountaineers with eight seconds left to go in the first quarter. So the Mountaineers want to regroup here, and I guess you can only speculate why the timeout has been called here by West Virginia as Fred Smallis goes over to talk some defensive strategy. It's an unusual time and place to have a timeout unless... That's uh, just hard to speculate on something like that. Yeah. It's not a real good place to, to use one. Van Richardson and Fred Smalls over talking with the coaching staff, and there you see Bill Dooley talking to his quarterback, Todd Greenwood. He's a senior from Mount Airy, North Carolina. WVU offense averaging a bit over 150 yards a game rushing, a bit over 165 passing, 316 yards average per game. While Virginia Tech is averaging about 362 yards a game. And, of course, they really got their offense together last week against Syracuse, albeit this is not one of Syracuse's best teams this year. Well, they've got a fine runner in uh, Eddie Hunter. He's uh, excellent. And uh, those two senior quarterbacks with all that experience are throwing that ball well out there today. And Bill Dooley's had to do a lot of rebuilding on defense. Tech lost eight, eight starters from last year's team, including Bruce Smith, who was the number one pick in the NFL draft. Second down and six. Man in motion for the Hokies of Virginia Tech. And Hunter again is brought down for a loss. Met behind the line of scrimmage by a host of Mountaineers. Dale McDonald, reserve nose guard out of Springfield, Ohio, was the first one to meet him. And Freddie Smalls is back there to say, how do you do? Well, that's the type of defense they have to have. Those linemen have to be tough in there. And... They were tough on that one. And with that, we have reached the end of the first quarter. A very active and exciting first quarter from Mountaineer Field. Our score, Virginia Tech 9, West Virginia 7. Back in a moment. Start of the second quarter from Mountaineer Field in Morgantown. I'm Tom Meese with Fred Wyatt. Third down and seven for Virginia Tech Hokies at their own 29-yard line. Virginia Tech leading it over the Mountaineers 9-7. to seven. Greenwood, the quarterback, rolling right. He's got some running room. He slips. Well, that's the second time that a Hokie a running back, or in this case the quarterback, slipped. It cost him a first down. Jeff Lucas and Dale McDonald were in the area, but now Virginia Tech will have to punt. End of the first quarter, you can see West Virginia had the best of it offensively, both rushing, passing, and obviously in total yards. David Cox comes in to punt for Virginia Tech, and Tony Johnson is back in single safety, standing on his own 22-yard line. Cox having to punt against the win. It is a short punt. And it will bounce at the Mountaineer 43. Takes a Mountaineer bounce into Virginia Tech territory. They're saying, hey, we got to get back here and stop this thing. West Virginia is going to have great field position. First and 10 at the 41-yard line. We saw a punt like that, I believe, against uh, in the Louisville game. They just bounced. Got a great Mountaineer bounce. That was a 12-yard punt. Yep. So it's great for West Virginia. Well, when you're punting against the wind and you get that thing sort of knuckleballing up there, you, that's why the football's shaped the way it is. You don't know what the heck it's going to do. Well, he's uh, experiencing that seven-yard loss in average this year, and uh, he, it didn't look to me like he's followed through on about two of his punts. Well, the Mountaineers will take it very gratefully. First and ten, West Virginia at the Tech 41-yard line, actually. So Grantis Bell will split out wide to one side, and Brian Krawcheck is in there, the man in motion. Rita back to throw on first down. He's going for Bell. He's open, but he overthrows him by a couple of yards. Grantis Bell had beaten the coverage of Eric Hayes and Carter Wiley. That was the similar pattern to the touch or to the near touchdown play in the first quarter when Robert White caught the long pass down at the three-yard line. Well, I like this. They're coming out throwing on first down, and Rita had a nice pass out there. Maybe the wind caught it a little bit. Yeah, he just uh, overthrew the ball a little bit. Lots of speed out there with Bell and now Robert White. Hollifield is lined up as a wing back to the left side. Pecan was the only running back. He goes out on a pattern. Hollifield across the middle has got the ball inside the 35, gets away. Hollifield to the 28 yard line. First and 10, Mountaineers. Morgan Roan was there on a tackle along with Bo, with uh, Carter Wiley. So first and ten for the Mountaineers. Well, you can see Tony goes back, sets up, 
they want the ball to Hollifield. There's one tackler, miss, takes two others out, and picks up another five yards. They, right. ha they have to get him the ball so they can maneuver out there in the open. Dwight Osbrooks, defensive end number 90, had both hands on the running back that time, Hollifield, and let him go. Should have had it. Hollifield's very elusive. Tony Rita, 50% on the day, 80 yards. Passing attack has worked well. Better for West Virginia this week than it has over the last couple of weeks, that's for sure. They give us the Pecan. Pecan inside the 25-yard line. Gain around four yards on that play. It'll be second down and six. Morgan Roan again on the tackle with Ray Fitz, the left corner, coming up for support. I think that's the first time the fullback's carried. Yep. Yeah, you can see right here. That's a tough run. Mm. Look at that. Spin, and that's a tough four yards, and that's what they've got to have, though. They need to have that type of running from their fullback. So Mr. Wolfley used to do so well for several years here at West Virginia. Now applying his trade with the Pittsburgh Steelers up the road apiece. They give us to Hollifield, the tailback. Hollifield down to the 21-yard line. Ray Fitz brings him down. Hollifield about two yards short of the first down. Pecan led that play and made a nice block in there on the linebacker. And Hollifield, here we go. See Pecan lead into the, into the line. Great block. Takes the guy completely out. Hollifield picks up two or three. Let me correct myself. There's a flag on the play. While we wait to see what it is, it's against the Mountaineers. Wolfley's not with Pittsburgh. I should have known that. He's with the St. Louis Cardinals. It's his brother that's with Pittsburgh. That's right. Craig Wolfley. Bound, ball's back at the 33-yard line. Holding. Blue. Ten yards. Well, second down. Again, a potential killer of a drive. The old holding. They have liberalized the blocking rules in college football this year. They've, they've picked up the same rules that the pros have used for several years. On the reverse, here goes Grannis Bell. Bell inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. That looked like a big play when it first took shape. But Dwight Osbrooks was there to help close it down. And Lawrence White as well. Anytime you reverse into the short side of the field... You always have that disadvantage over there of the defense having that sideline as their ally. He was hog-tied to the ground that time, down to the 24-yard line. It brings up a third down and six. Should Bauman have to try a field goal this time, he'd have the win at his back. 12-20 to go in the first half. Virginia Tech leads it 9-7. to seven. Rita sends everybody out. He's going for the touchdown. Got a man. Touchdown, Mountaineers! Brian Kwachik! Tony Rita to Brian Krawczyk, and again, Fred Wyatt, he laid that ball in perfectly. Boy, if you watch, Tony sets up. He's a pure backup passer, steps, brings that ball over, great follow-through, and the great catch in the end zone for the touchdown. I'll tell you, I've never seen Tony look better, and he looks this afternoon. He really is laying the ball up there very, very nicely. He led the receiver who beat the coverage again. Virginia Tech has been getting beat on some deep patterns all day long. And you have to have that quarterback in order to have a successful team. And it looks like maybe here. We're... Well, here comes Charlie Bauman attack on the extra point. Mountaineers in the lead with 12-11 to go in the first half. West Virginia 14, Virginia Tech 9. Back to Mountaineer Field with more excitement in a moment. Brian Krawczyk, the senior out of Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. Not too tall, 5'11", as today's football players go, 175, but he had some speed that time. And you were talking about Tony Rita. Let's take another look at it, Fred. Again, watch this. Great fundamentals, step, great throw. Look at that ball hang up there, but still get there in a great pattern, and that's right on the money. And the man who is weeping right now is Eric Hayes. He's the guy that said, uh-oh, number 87 is behind me, and... Uh, Going to get a touchdown. So the Mountaineers take the lead, 14 to 9. Bauman is in there to kick off. Eddie Hunter is one man back there for Virginia Tech. He's joined by Tim Dudley. There's Hunter. Ernie Jones also back in that neighborhood as well. And the sun shining brightly at Morgantown. Mountaineer Field is 
Bauman really gets a leg into that one, sends it five yards deep into the end zone. Hunter says, no way, I'm not returning this thing. He'll take it first and ten at the 20-yard line. So that's where the Hokies will start it. Virginia Tech um, not having all that impressive a year, Fred. They were 0-3 and lost to the likes of Cincinnati and Richmond. But if you're not ready to play those types of people, and especially if you have a lot of inexperience on defense, you can lose games like that. Well, you can, and Cincinnati's program is improving. Uh, they've really gone all out to try to develop their program. As I recall, I believe they beat Penn State last year. Yeah, uh, they did. Early or a couple years ago, early on. Yeah, yeah they did. so now they're gonna have to re-kick this thing. A penalty flag. Offside. Kicking team. First five yards. Kick again. Well, here you go. Possibility of a kick return now. Set of little things like this drive a coach crazy. Offsides on the kicker. They're the difference. The great teams. Uh, when Vince Lombardi had great teams, he had the lowest number of penalties. And he was uh, somebody that could jump on you about a penalty, but if he if he found out that uh, his person was wrong, they were the people that uh, got jumped on, because he didn't want to lose a game because of something like that. Eddie Hunter back to receive the kickoff, along with Ernie Jones, I believe that's back there now, Hunter and Jones. Or make that Tim Dudley, okay. Hunter and Dudley, and Bauman will kick out from the 35, gets plenty of leg on this, but this one will be returned because it's caught at the two-yard line by Hunter. Hunter at the 15, the 20, fumbles the football, scramble at the 20-yard line. Who's got it? Virginia Tech. The official stepping right in there and saying, Virginia Tech has recovered this football. So they do all that, re-kick it, fumble it, and they still end up at the 20-yard line. Brad Matheny came down and made the hit that caused the fumble. And Bill Dooley breathing a sigh of relief. I think Brad Matheny was a walk-on uh, from up here, uh, I think in Preston County. I'm not positive about that, but he was a good athlete in high school. Well, a lot of good athletes, they say, thrive on those special teams, and Brad has made his presence felt today already. Mark Cox is now in there at quarterback, number eight for Virginia Tech, replacing... Todd Greenwood, Maurice Williams gets the handoff on first down. He'll pick up five yards to the 25. Second down and five. Don't know exactly why Mark Cox is being put in there. I don't think uh, the offense not moving had anything to do with him necessarily. Well, they're trying to just activate that offense a little bit uh, outside of that first drive. They haven't done much here in the last part of the first quarter. Second down and five. They get to the tailback, and that is Maurice Williams, who's over the 30-yard line of the 32 before Travis Curtis brings him down. First and 10 Hokies at the 32-yard line. The Mountaineers lead it 14 to 9. This is the last home game here at Mountaineer Field for five weeks. Off week next week, and you're at Boston College, at Penn State, at Virginia. <laughs> None of them very easy, are they? No. Mark Cox, you see his figures so far in this season. And in motion for Virginia Tech, Cox rolling right, and he completes the pass out there to Steve Ellsworth. Ellsworth is near midfield. Larry Holly knocks him out of bounds. Holly gambled on the interception that time and lost. Lost, yeah. If he'd have gotten that ball, might have been a touchdown, but this is a nice pass. He's rolling left and throwing. Puts the ball right on the money, too. That was Andrew Jones on the coverage. Andrew Jones gambled for the interception. Holly made the tackle. So Andrew Jones almost had himself a touchdown. Anyway, it's a first down for Virginia Tech at midfield. They give it to Maurice Williams, and Maurice is stopped for a couple of yards game. Freddie Small and Derek Christian make the tackle. Second down and eight. We heard the Virginia Tech, different Tech team, going to come in here and throw, 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 throw. Well, today, they've run for the most part about 80% of the time. Yeah, they haven't thrown, uh, they haven't gone after West Virginia like a passing team, but they've got on a pretty daggone good runner out there with Eddie Hunter. Yes, he is good. He's shown me a lot today. Steve Ellsworth split out to the top of the screen for Virginia Tech in motion. Goes the Hokies, Desmar Becton, who caught a touchdown pass in the first series of plays. Here's the rush, and down goes Cox. Down he goes, Mike Herzog. 
Pulls him down at the 42-yard line. Big loss on that play. And that'll take Virginia Tech into an obvious passing situation now. This is a type of number 60 lost these block on 51, but that's the type of rush that they have to have. They talk about the defensive backs and, and uh, the fact that they have had those passes completed on them. You don't get that rush up front. It's too tough. Anybody can beat a defender. I don't care how good he is. Third down and 16. And Cox says, hey, wait a minute. Mountaineers doing something on defense I don't like, so I'm going to call timeout. And so will we with 9.45 to go in the first half. The score, Mountaineers 14, Hokies 9. Back to Morgantown in a moment. Welcome back to Morgantown. Sell our crowd on homecoming at Mountaineer Field. I'm Tom Meese with Fred Wine. And we'll see the West Virginia Mountaineers. We said at the start of the show that a lot of injuries for Don Nealon. Look at that. Todd Fisher gone for the year. Fred Smalls playing with a bad ankle. Steve Holloway has a back spasm problem out this game. Stacy Smith not playing today with a knee. John Gay, the fullback on the offensive side, is not playing because of a shoulder injury. And that doesn't even count a lot of the guys who are playing with assorted bumps and bruises. Nealon told me yesterday Brad, that he'd never seen uh, injuries like this one after another after another since he's been here in the Mountaineers uh, backyard in Morgantown. Well sometimes it makes it pretty hard to get into the flow of things. I know when, when we played of course we didn't have as many players but one player we'd get one player injured and it would just cause a turmoil with the whole team. So I know with six or seven what it must mean to him. Well, Hokie quarterback Mark Cox facing uh, West Virginia defense and knows he has third and 16, knows he has to throw the ball. He's under a rush, and he gets away from the initial rush, but down he'll go at the 48-yard line, bringing him down finally for the Mountaineers' Van Richardson. Jim Duffield also in there, but Van Richardson is the guy who wrapped his arms around and brought him down with Duffield. Let's take another look at that as the Mountaineers force a punch. This is a good job he does back here, getting away from the defenders. There's uh, a, uh, yeah. uh, but he, he still doesn't get much, and that's the kind of defense they have to have. So, the punt again, and the snap is fumbled. The ball is loose, and West Virginia recovers at the 42-yard line as David Cox could never handle the snap. And this game of breaks goes on, and that's a huge break for the Mountaineers. Low snap, Cox never handled it. Bo Orlando, number 22, makes the recovery. First and 10 Mountaineers in Hokie territory. Oh, my. Good defensive series for West Virginia. I say so. Good defensive series. <laughs> Superb would be the word. Uh, the Mountaineer defense was the highly touted part of this team coming into this year. Everybody knew that. Couldn't really tell against Louisville how good they were. They held Pitt to only 10 points. And in the second half against Maryland, let's not forget, they, they shut Maryland out the second half. So they have held up their part of the bargain consistently throughout this season. They give us the Tommy Gray on first down, and Gray, like a groundhog, burrowing down to the 40-yard line. Rick Singleton, left defensive tackle for Virginia Tech, brings him down after a gain around three. Defense is starting to flick the little punishment out there and uh, really uh, being tough. And that's what it's going to take out there because VPI is always a tough football team. So far, VPI is killing itself with things like bad snaps on punts, penalties, people slipping down when they're rushing for a first down. West Virginia is taking advantage. Read his pass intended for Tommy Gray is batted down at the line of scrimmage. Trying to get the number of the truck that reached up and batted that one down. One of the big defensive linemen. That's Rick Singleton again. So it'll be third down and about seven yards to go. Hey, that offensive line has given Tony some pretty daggone good pass protection out there today. And yep. he's, a, he's a pretty cool quarterback back there, fundamentally very sound. Well, third down and seven, passing down. West Virginia trying to take advantage of the break on the bad snap of the Virginia Tech punt, but it won't be on this series as the pass intended for Grantis Bell is short. Ray Fitz was on the coverage, and West Virginia's Steve Suprick will come in to attempt his first punt of the day. Steve has got the win with him. This is where your punter becomes a weapon. You're not concerned with the length of the punt now. You're working for field position. And Steve does a really fine job of getting that ball out short. 
Suprick will bounce at the five yard line takes a West Virginia bounce they're going to down it inside the 10 certainly we have a penalty flag down ball goes out of bounds at the Hokie eight yard line let's see what the flag is if it's against Tech it can push him back to the four if it's a half the distance penalty and the preliminary indication from Eric Lester as he trots off the field for the Mountaineers this is against the Hokies so one of these illegal blocks above the waist I've never understood that <laughs> you have to be a college professor to understand that personal foul well that could be a lot of things yep it's a half the distance penalty ball went out of bounds at the 8 Don Nealon there you see 6th year at West Virginia wins today he's tied for the se second on the all time win list ball is back to the 3 yard line so I guess the ball went out at the 6 originally the personal foul on the white team the receiver signaled for a fair catch and then dropped during the down all right you can't do that Fred you want to elaborate on that a little bit once you give that signal for a fair catch then you can't block somebody coming down because of the, the defender coming down the field sort of relaxes when that guy does that all right so Virginia Tech has the ball but now they have it back at their own three yard line first and ten Steve Supert did his job. And nowhere on the running play for the Hokies goes Ernie Jones. He goes nowhere because Derek Christian, his opposite number, literally 49 meeting 49, makes the stop at the five-yard line. This is, a, this is a time where an experienced defense really can change the complexion of a game. They hold them down here within seven yards of, and make them punt. There's a lot of things that can happen out there, funny things. Well, it's a lot of time, too. 7.44 to go in the half. Clock running. Cox, the quarterback, handing off to Eddie Hunter. And Hunter goes absolutely nowhere. Stumbles, actually, after taking the handoff. Jim Duffield makes the stop for the Mountaineers. A lot of second and third line people playing on that West Virginia defense today because of necessity. Injuries to the front line personnel. It's amazing. You sometimes discover some players out there that are really do the job and they get in there they're excited they want to do it and their defense is starting to swarm a little bit now Tom and make it tough on DPI well third down and eight I wouldn't want to be in Mark Cox's shoes right now tough place to be from the five yard line he gives to his running back and hey what do you know first down is garnered by Eddie Hunter he, get, he was caught for a loss by Herzog got out of Herzog's grasp and is up over the 15 yard line before Travis Curtis brings him down. That could be as big a play as Tech has had in the first half. Well, Eddie Hunter on the draw, look at this, these moves. Uh, a bad tackle, a bad tackle. But he makes uh, some nice runs and some nice moves to help those. I think if I were VPI, I'd be using Eddie Hunter a lot more than they've used him so far. Let me correct myself. That wasn't Herzog that uh, he got away from. It was Jim Duffield. So it's first and ten. Virginia Tech are back out at their own 16-yard line. Here's Maurice Williams, the tailback. Got good running room over the 25 to the 26-yard line. Travis Curtis stops him there. Close to another first down. I'll tell you, he's a nice runner, too. He's curious. Take another look at Maurice Williams. Good blocks. Anytime you get a big back into that defensive backfield, it's tough for those uh, smaller guys to bring them down without them picking up an extra three to seven yards. Well, now Mark Cox, the Tech quarterback, has got it down to play with, second and short. Very short indeed. Backs in the eye, strong to the right side, and that's where Cox will roll. Got a receiver at the sidelines for the first down. It is complete to Desmar Becton. That's a touchdown catch today. First and ten for Tech. Dave Lockwood freshman for the Mountaineers out of Philly came over to make the play nice roll out throws off balance but the receivers right there where he wants him steps out of bounds hard pass to defend against that ought to be a movie star Desmar Becton Hollywood would love that name has all the credentials going in doesn't he Tom <laughs> Now the referee has signaled that West Virginia on defense again has called another timeout with 5.51 left to go here in the first half. We'll go to a commercial break and be back in a moment as Van Richardson huddles with the defensive coaches on the sideline. Our score, West Virginia 14, Virginia Tech 9.
There's a look at Tony Rita, who's played a pretty good first half of football for the Mountaineers. Commenting a moment ago on Maurice Williams, not a bad running back for Virginia Tech, Fred. Yes, he, he he's a little more elusive than uh, Hunter, but they both with about uh, 4.1 and 4.7 rushing average. That's pretty good rushing average. And it speaks well for that offensive line, which is a veteran group for Virginia Tech. You have three seniors and two juniors. It's the defensive side of the line of scrimmage where the Hokies are young, and they showed it, especially in the secondary today. Well, West Virginia broke down on that one play. They had uh, down there, they held them and then uh, let Eddie Hunter make that 10-yard uh, run for a first down. And as you commented, that was probably the most critical play for them in the first half. All right, first and 10 for Virginia Tech. 5.51 to go in the first half. Ball on the Hokie 32-yard line. Mark Cox, who came in a couple of series ago for the starting quarterback, Todd Greenwood, hands off to Maurice Williams again, and Mike Herzog makes the tackle. Herzog from Waldorf, Maryland. Ball over the 35 to the 37-yard line. Be second down and six, gain of four in the play. Well, we talked about that defense being tough down on the goal line. Now they've got to get tough because they can't let VPI march the length and get that score before halftime. Second and six play. Cox rolling right. Rose got a man and complete for the first down to Steve Johnson. Reserve tight end, sophomore, big kid, 6'6", 240. Andrew Jones makes the tackle, but Johnson has a first down in Mountaineer territory. They're going to mark it at the West Virginia 48-yard line. Mark Cox can throw that ball. Their quarterbacks throw well, Tom, and, and that presents a problem when you've got a 6'6"-inch guy out there against those smaller backs. And he throws well on the run, too. He yes, always he does. He'll sprint out to the, to the strong side of the formation. Not as easy as it looks, believe me. Cox, though, throwing from the pocket over the middle for Johnson, and it is incomplete. Went to the hot hand again. Steve Johnson back there on the coverage was Andrew Jones and Larry Holly also back there, along with Willie Edwards. So Johnson was not alone. Good coverage by the Mountaineers secondary. Yeah, that was real great coverage. They, uh, as a matter of fact, he was lucky he didn't get that ball intercepted. <laughs> Look for a moment nothing. like it might have been intercepted. Johnson really never had a serious chance to catch that ball. That'll bring up a second down and 10. Boston College 13, Rutgers 3. Double wide receiver and a man in motion for Virginia Tech. And here's a mix up in the backfield. Finally, taking the ball is Eddie Hunter. Hunter is going to take a loss. Derek Christian. And Freddie Smalls helped him do that back in Hokie territory at the 49. Again, a miscue on offense. And uh, I don't think Hunter uh, wants to meet his quarterback like that too often. No, a little mistake. Freddie Smalls. Well, already, they already had the mix up in the backfield, and that just uh, that break gave West Virginia a chance to get set up and, and uh, throw him for a loss. That'll bring up a third down and 13 for Virginia Tech at its own 49-yard line. Mountaineers leading, just tuning in, 14-9. Cox got plenty of time, got all day, and picks out a receiver, has his man, but short of the first down is Donald Snell. Snell back into Mountaineer territory, but he is brought down at the 45-yard line. Derek Christian with a tackle. And it'll be about, oh, seven yards short of the first down. So, Mr. Adventure, David Cox, back in the punt for Virginia Tech. And we know what happened the last time. When you're a punter and that ball starts rolling back and coming in high, it does uh, sort of cause a little concern for you. Tony Johnson back in single safety at his own 10-yard line. This isn't a bad kick. Johnson singles for a fair catch. It bounces at the 15. Virginia Tech, will they stop it? And... And we have a fly. Now, did the ball get into the end zone or not? It is a touchback, I believe, being signaled. We're just going to have to wait and see. The referee threw a beanbag down there. Yes, I think. I'm trying to see he has a flag down. I don't know what the penalty is, what it would be on that. Uh, when he touched the end zone, any part of his body in the end zone, then, of course, that puts the ball in the end zone. It was unfortunate because they had plenty of time to get around the ball, and they allowed it to roll in. 
Well, uh, evidently the flag was thrown because the ball was illegally touched after going into the end zone. Uh, either that or it came out with his beanbag. So <laughs> that will happen sometimes. <laughs> that's it. That, that's true. You see that happens and the referee says disregard the flag. Disregard it. I always chuckle when I see that. I know referees don't like it too much, but it's, it's funny. Anyway, first and ten for West Virginia. Hollowfield gets the handoff up to the 24-yard line. Gain of four in the play. Running behind the Gary Pounds and Scott Saylor in the offensive line. Nelson and Rome make the tackle for Virginia Tech. Tom, that one critical play down there when we had them down on the goal line and they make the first down cost us 50 yards. That's the difference of 50 yards right there on the field. One play. It's a shame. I'm sure the coaches will point that out when they show the films this week. Well, especially when they had two shots to tackling. Robert White in motion. Rita back to throw on second and six. Got all sorts of time. Now has to scramble for his life. And Tony is chased out of bounds for a loss of a couple of yards. Back at the 21, Rainier Coleman. Right tackle. Ran him out. So it'll be third down and nine. You know the thing I like about Tony this afternoon, uh, he, had, he had plenty of time back there, but he didn't have anybody open. And rather than throw the ball down there and take a chance on getting intercepted, he moved around and then sprinted for the sideline and got out of bounds. He's doing a really heady job back there playing quarterback this afternoon, Tom. 231 left to go in the first half. Third down and nine. Key play for the Mountaineers. They want to put some more points on the board before halftime. Rita, play fake, has his man. He is wide open. That is Phillips. Phillips is up to the 40-yard line for a first down. I make that Krawchick. Krawchick, who caught the touchdown pass. 87 Krawchick, not 82 Phillips. Carter Wiley made the tackle. You know, he doesn't have the speed of the other receivers out there, but I... now you watch Tony goes back again, sets up and throws the ball. What a delivery today. Beautiful job. The receiver's wide open. Now, every, every team has... Rita back to throw. Plenty of time. He's going long. He's got Phillips open. Got it. Oh, he dropped it. Oh, I thought Calvin had that at the 15, Fred, but it just went through his hands. He had beaten Billy Myers on the cover. Well, that was a shame because that ball, Tom, didn't even go through his hands. That one just came down into his arms, and he dropped it. And that's about three of those today, unfortunately. You can see right there oh my. a perfect pass. Oh, my. Perfect pass. Well, I know Calvin feels terrible about that. <laughs> you know what? So does Don Nealon. <laughs> yeah, when you have uh, three of those in one day, all of a sudden it's, it's like the snapper on the punts. Yep. <laughs> you just can't keep throwing it to him. Second down and ten. Grantis Bell in motion this time. Ball back at the 40-yard line. And the give on the delay to Hollifield, and Hollifield has some decent yardage. Now, ball comes loose. The question is, can the ground cause a fumble? And well, we know the ground can't, but was he called down? Nelson, makes, uh, Nelson and White make the tackle for Tech. He was They're down pointing down, right. The ball was down. So they'll give him two yards on the carry. It'll be third down and, oh, about seven yards to go. You know, every team has a, a, a receiver like Brian. We were out in Seattle uh, two weeks ago, and you see the great receivers that they have out there that uh, there's one guy gets open, and he's doing a great job. Yeah, it's Turner of Seattle. He's an excellent one. Rita, meanwhile, has plenty of time over the middle. And the, the Gary Basil, the tight end. Basil had the ball right in his hands, and he dropped it. Well, that should have been caught, no doubt about that. Well, Tony has about five, six completions today that he hasn't gotten. And uh, it's tough out there, but they just got to make some of those plays. Back in the punt return for Virginia Tech. As Super just gets it off, we're going to have a flag. They roughed him up. Back there is Billy Myers, but pay no mind to Myers in single safety. It'll be first and ten West Virginia as Suprick was roughed up and roughed good. No acting on this play. They just came in after the ball, and they missed the ball and got Steve pretty bad. Running into the kicker. Now that should be an automatic first down, and we still have a minute and 32. It could be, again, a costly mistake. 
Well, the ball is going to be put in Virginia Tech territory. Mountaineers leading at 14 to 9. Just love to get some more points on the board before halftime. Roughing the kicker. Defense. First down. That's rubbing the kicker as opposed to running into the kicker. In other words, the man wasn't blocked and he ran in and, and hit it. Well, I'm not sure what the rule is in college. Professional, uh, you'll never see roughing the kicker. You, it's always running into the kicker. That was a running into the kicker, but they may, they may only have roughing. You can see penalties today have hurt both teams. And this one could be a real cruncher for Virginia Tech if the Mountaineers come back and put it in there for six. Rita got plenty of time. He's gone for it all. He's got a man. And it is intercepted and dropped. Intercepted and dropped by Carter Wiley. Robert White was open. That was a great throw, and but it was even a greater defensive play. And when you have that free safety, that's you just saw how a free safety is supposed to operate. At the last minute right there, Lucky didn't pick it off. Yeah, that was just you know, nobody's fault. Wiley did a great job. The ball was delivered perfectly, but no way uh, Rita could be expected to see him roaming around back there. Yeah, he did a great defensive job. So it'll bring up second and ten. I tell you, I like the imagination today, going for it all on first down like that, keeping the defensive team off balance. Meanwhile, we're going to have another flag. It's going to be pass interference on Virginia Tech. On the coverage of that play, Paul Nelson was all over John Hollifield. So, another ball. big penalty. Another big penalty. The ball's in the air. You've got to leave that receiver alone. And you know what? You know what got me? Paul Nelson, when he saw the flag, he had the audacity to go up to the ref and say, well, I didn't do anything. Let's watch it. Watch the hit. Bam. And that's... See, the ball's in the, the air. Pass in the Great call. First down. So, Mountaineers get another break here with a minute 20 left to go in the half. First and 10 on the Hokie 40-yard line. I tell you, VPI is doing their best to try to get West Virginia down there to score. Yes, they are. They're being good neighbors, aren't they? They really are. I'm not so sure Bill Dooley would find that amusing, but he'll have his uh, say at halftime, I'm sure. Whoops. We're going to have flags against West Virginia now. Gary Basil, the tight end, was off a good uh, second or so before the snap. So West Virginia marches back five yards. The little thing make the difference between a great football team and a good football team or an average football team. When you were when you were quarterback and back here at West Virginia, did you ever have a, a game or a season where you had more of these things happen to you than, than not? Or I don't ever remember us ever having a game that we lost because of penalties. Offense, uh, enforcement, five yards, still first down. We played a lot together, and we didn't have a lot of, uh, we only had about 11 guys <laughs> playing <laughs> offense and defense, so you got used to everybody's signals and snaps and cadence. Now, of course, the age of specialization. Five-yard penalty, first and 15. Rita going to throw the ball anyway, has Basil, and Basil has it and is hit. And the ball is knocked out of his hands by Carter Wiley, who's playing a heck of a football game for Virginia Tech. Gary had it for a second, but he was nailed. He was. That, was. that was, again, a great defense. Here's Tony again. Great blocking. Sets up. What a great delivery. Again, right in the, on the money. Now, that's a real tough one right there because he didn't really have good control of it. He had his hands out in front of him. He's concentrating on the ball, and here comes this helmet underneath him and hits him in the chest. You can understand how he can drop that. That's a tough catch if you make that one. Second down and 15. Rita slips to the turf and he is pummeled as well back at the 45-yard line of West Virginia by Jamel Ajemi. And it'll be third and 25, a big loss of 10 yards on that play. Well, 58 seconds and the clock running here in the first half. Both teams have really... Now, the West Virginia defense has played better than Virginia Tech defense, but both teams' offenses have done a good job of stopping themselves. Yes, they have. Those penalties will kill you. Clock running now, 40 seconds. Obvious, third and 25. Reed is just telling everybody to go long, and he dumps it out to Chris Pecan. Pecan is in the 45-yard line, runs out of bounds to stop the clock. But it's well, well short of the first down and well out of Charlie Bauman's field goal range, and so it'll be Steve Suprick coming in to try and nail... Virginia Tech deep in its own territory again. Billy Myers is back there on the punt return. 
doubt that Virginia Tech will try to block this one. They can ill afford to give them 15 more yards. Well, they're sending everybody, Fred. Here they come. They're not sending up a return. Super gets it off. Myers calls for the fair catch. And he'll take it in at the 18-yard line with 27 seconds left to go in the first half. Myers is spilled to the turf, but no flag. It'll be first and ten for Virginia Tech there. So barring a spectacular happenstance here, West Virginia will go to the locker room with a 14-9 lead. In a rather curious game. Uh, I would imagine VPI will just attempt to, to hold on to the ball and run the clock out here in those 27 seconds. Well, changing quarterbacks again, at least for this one series. Todd Greenwood, who started the game for Tech, is coming back in for this last series of the first half, and he hands off to Eddie Hunter. Hunter, the workhorse over the 25 to the 27-yard line. Van Richardson, one of the men to greet him there, along with Travis Curtis. Actually, he gained around seven yards. All was said and done. Clock running, though. That could be the last play of the first half. Nine, eight, seven. I don't think they're going to get another one off. I think that's what they wanted to do. Eddie yeah. Hunter is a superb runner out there. That is the end of the first half of play. Sellout crowd on a sunbaked day in Morgantown. Roars its approval, at least for now, as the Mountaineers on top, 14 to 9. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Mountaineer Field. Our score at halftime is the band entertaining the sellout crowd of 62,000 on homecoming, 14 to 9, the Mountaineers. I'm Tom Mees in company with Fred Wyant. And Fred, in the first half, we've seen a lot of good things for West Virginia. Let's talk about the good things. First of all, the offensive line has done a good job. Tom, the offensive line has done a really superb job out there. Tony Rita uh, has been absolutely great. Fundamentally sound, throwing the ball well. Uh, those are the highlights so far that I've seen. As far as the low lights are concerned, uh, Tony Rita has done a great job, but his stats could be even better had not some receivers dropped the ball. Well, unfortunately, they've dropped about six passes, and he's had the ball in there all day. He's had the blocking. They're going to have to catch the ball a lot better than they're doing right now. What about the defensive side of line of scrimmage? Banged up. We touched on that before the game. We touched on it during the first half. How would you say the Mountaineer defense has played so far? Well, I like the way they've played out there. They've done a good job. Uh, the defensive line has played well. They allowed one play in there that was critical, which cost them about 50 yards at the end of the game that could have made a difference. The one thing that has hurt both teams, of course, those little yellow hankies, something you're very familiar with, uh, with as an NFL referee. Penalties just seem to crop up at the worst times for both teams. Well, th that's true. And West Virginia, on a couple of occasions, has really lost it when they've allowed those penalties to come up. Uh, unfortunately, unnecessary ones. And uh, it's the type of thing that ruins a good game for you. I don't know about you, but the one thing I like is the way that the West Virginia receivers are able to beat the Virginia Tech coverage and how Rita's been laying the ball out there. Sooner or later, this stuff has to click for some big plays. Well, I think so. And if they start to catch the ball, I think it'll make a big difference out there for uh, everybody as far as West Virginia is concerned. Robert White had one big catch in the first half, almost had a couple others. Let's hope that uh, the receivers can get over the drop and West Virginia can stay away from those penalties and have a good second half. Well, I think Tony Reed is just doing a superb job out there today, and he's the key, and the key to any good football team's that quarterback. So I hope he can, they can start catching that ball for him. We're just about set for the second half of play. Our halftime score, West Virginia 14, Virginia Tech 9. Back for the second half in just a moment. And they're taking the football. They'll be moving from our left to right. And they will be moving with the win. We'll be going over the halftime stats in just a moment. Charlie Bauman seeing the ball up as it starts to get a bit cooler here in Morgantown. Tim Dudley along with Eddie Hunter back to receive the kickoff at the goal line. Bauman against the win gets a good leg on it as it is taken at the seven-yard line by Hunter. Hunter turns it up the middle for a second, but Tony Johnson... Goes back to receive punts and kickoffs for West Virginia. Makes the tackle the 20-yard line. That's where Virginia Tech will start. First down and 10 as the Mountaineers come into this third quarter, leading 14 to 9. Let's take a brief look at the halftime stats. Right, you can see West Virginia having a bit better of it uh, on the total yardage part, although Virginia Tech rushing the ball a bit more effectively. Well, West Virginia has got that passing yardage. That could probably be about 300 yards if they make some catches. Time of possession even, turnovers even, first downs, uh, not too uh, much to choose from, and only a five-point differential on the scoreboard. So that's why it should be an exciting second half. These two teams 
fairly evenly matched. Starting the second half for Virginia Tech is Greenwood. Brad Hunt hits him. He cuts up the football. And back there to get it for Virginia Tech is Scott Cruz, number 67. Big Brad Hunt nailed the quarterback Greenwood. And the Hokies are lucky they retain possession. Brad Hunt's had a good afternoon out here. He breaks through there, not only makes the tackle, but jars the ball loose. And luckily for BPI, they had a trailer there and picked it up. So it's uh, second down for the Hokies back at their six-yard line, second and 24. Again, that Mountaineer defense making a big play. Backs in the eye formation behind Greenwood, and the toss is to the tailback, Hunter, and Hunter's going nowhere as he's knocked down at the five-yard line. The whole turf. host of Mountaineers over there, Fred. Yeah, that turf must be a little slippery for them. That's about three times. Travis Curtis was one of the primary tacklers over there. Well, they're sweeping that ball into the short side of the field. That's a tough play. It really is a tough play. Uh, and you got the sideline, and West Virginia's defense came up and played it real well. Derek Christian and Willie Edwards also in on the tackle. Loss of two yards in the play. Third down and 26. Mr. Greenwood, I do not envy you. Crowd really getting into it here in Morgantown. to give this to Ernie Jones, and he'll just throw for a couple of yards and set up a punting situation. Matt Smith makes the tackle. Okay, here we go, Fred. We got Virginia Tech in a punting situation as the defense gets a standing ovation here. David Cox is going to be punting from the back of his end zone, and Tony Johnson standing at the Mountaineer 40. This should be a good position for West Virginia. It's a difficult spot to punt from. Mountaineers not really rushing everybody, trying to set up a return. Johnson comes up to midfield and waves for the fair catch, and he'll take it there as he backs up to the Mountaineer 47-yard line. So excellent field position, and Cox did his job well for Virginia Tech. That was a, that was a great punt. He uh, kicked that ball, hit it good, and hit it high, and it went 50 yards uh, from the, well, about 45 from the line of scrimmage, but an excellent punt. Yeah, he had the win with him, and he took advantage of it that time. But nonetheless, excellent field position for West Virginia. Mountaineers have it first and ten at their own 48-yard line. Let's see if they can do what they did the first time they got their hands on the ball in the first quarter. That's marched down the field for a touchdown. Rita handing off to Hollifield. Pecan throws a nice block, and Hollifield is in the open field down to the 34-yard line. Oh, Chris Pecan threw a great block for Hollifield. Carter Wiley brought him down. Got to have that block and fullback in front of you. Well, Chris has done a great job. Let's watch him here. He's leading that play. Gets 39. outside. Takes the guy right out. Hollifield breaks right behind him. Hollifield did a great job of running. Set up the block. And that's one of the key. Take a ground uh, ground to level. Okay, field. here he comes out. Now watch Hollifield. Keeps outside. Makes the defender commit. And then sets up the block. Great running job. Great blocking. And Pecan, after that great block, gets the handoff this time. The up man, and it's a gain of two or three yards. You know, Pecan on that block as Morgan Roan brought him down. You don't have to pancake or knock a guy on his back to make a good block. It was an influence block, and he did his job that way. Well, in a case like that sometimes against those little backs, all you have to do is just screen them, and you get a runner like Hollifield that can make the break, and he takes advantage of it, sets it up. Gain of three for Chris Pecan. It is second down and seven. Mountaineers threatening to open the second half. At the Hokie 31-yard line. Rita back to throw over the middle. Complete to the tight end. Gary Basil, he's got a first down. First and ten Mountaineers at the 22-yard line. Dwight Osbrook brings him down. Again, uh, another great pass. Just What's waited Tony? in there. What a tremendous exhibition of great fundamentals. Sets up, throws the ball right on the money, and puts it in there with the right speed and really a great pass so great he's got catch. A nice overhand release on that ball he does he's a quarterback first and 10 at the 22 yard line gain of 11 on that play Rita fumbles the snap got to cover it he does just that back at the 29 yard line and jumping on and going to get a penalty is Rodney Good number 68 or is that Rainier Coleman we'll have to wait until he gets up 58 58 or 68 there was no reason to do that because in college football, you're down. It's down, and even uh, there's no reason to do it. Even in professional, all you have to do is touch them and be down. So it was not a smart play. It's going to cost BPI, and uh, 
They just haven't been smart a lot of times this afternoon. That's Rainier Coleman. His 58 looked for a moment like a 68, but he is 58. Rainier Coleman, the right tackle. Let's listen in. Foul. Well, instead of second and long, Mountaineers now have it first down and three yards to go for a first down inside the 15. What a killer that is for Virginia That's a Tech. killer. Yes, it is. No other way to say it. That was a dumb play. Wait a second. Oh. They're, They're showing second down over there. For second down. Okay, second down and three yards yeah, to go. The ball was dead. It was a dead ball foul. All right. Give us the Hollowfield. Hollowfield has the first down. First and goal. John Hollowfield to the nine-yard line before Morgan Roan trips him up. He is a slashing type of runner, isn't he? Well, that offensive line has done some things uh, this week that they hadn't been doing the last few play uh, the weeks. Hollowfield in, does a good move, stops. Look at that. He just stops and goes right back into the line. He's a very elusive runner, very shifty. All right, first and goal, Mountaineers at the Virginia Tech nine-yard line. Give us the Hollifield. Hollifield bouncing off tacklers, gains only one or two yards on the play. Dwight Osbrooks and Mark Webb and Alan Harris all in there. The second and goal, they're going to mark it at the seven-yard line. When they get down close to the goal line, Tommy, those offensive linemen really have to hold their blocks a lot longer because you're not... They just don't give you that much space. Keith Wynn comes into the ball game for the first time today. Wynn is in there at an extra tight end position. Lining up as a tight end. He's listed as a split receiver. And now he'll go in motion. Give it to the tailback. Hollifield rolling left. And they're going to drag him down for a loss back at the 12-yard line. That's Dwight Osbrooks, number 90, the defensive end, who came in and made a good play along with that ever-present Carter Wiley. Here we go. It's on. We've got a handoff going to the outside but the uh, hollow field that time didn't do a good job of running the blocker was shoving the defensive man out and hollow field kept on going outside instead of cutting back in so it is a third and goal now for the mountaineers at the 12 win and Grantis bell are doubles double wideouts to the top of the screen rita looking that way he's under pressure tony's going to take the sack back at the 22 yard line well didn't find anybody open. Good job by the Hokey defense. Horatio Moranta brought Rita down as he took the sack rather than risk an interception. But now Charlie Ballman comes in. Brad, this is going to be a 39-yarder into the wind. Yeah. You can see Tony, they do, do not do I don't know whether they were trying to set up a draw, or excuse me, a screen there because it was not a good block on the first guy. He put that pressure on him, and Tony never had a chance. Charlie Ballman, who hit the upright, Last time he attempted a field goal at this very same direction against the wind. Angle to the right. Ball will be kicked from the 28. It'll be a 38-yard attempt officially. Snap is down. Kick is up. It's plenty long enough. And the kick is no good. No good. It is off to the right. So the wind jumps up and gets the Mountaineers and Charlie Bauman again. And after a great defensive stand, an excellent field position, no points on the board. Our score still, West Virginia 14, Virginia Tech 9, back to Mountaineer Field in just a moment. Welcome back to Mountaineer Field. Virginia Tech Hokies have to be buoyed by that defensive stand, Fred, because they still only trail by five. They dodged the bullet, first and ten for the 21, and the tailback, number two, Maurice Williams, gains about six yards on first down. CPI's defense uh, did an excellent job down there. One thing about it, when you get your, they can be more aggressive when uh, they've got their back against the goal line. They don't have to worry about as much territory, and that's exactly what they did. They got very aggressive that down there, and uh, they sort of attacked West Virginia's offense. Sure did. They got a gain of eight for Williams on first down, bringing it second and two at the 29. Rolling right is Greenwood, the quarterback, and he has his man out there. That's Donald Snell. Snell has the first down. He's out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Dave Lockwood, number 41 for the Mountaineers, makes the tackle. Nice pattern he ran that time, and you can see that nice block. their line he does a good job, but he's, uh, he's wide open out there. Just a nice pattern. Defensive man does a good job, but... He got open. First and 10 for the Hokies up at their own 30, 37 yard line. 
And the give is to the up man, Ernie Jones, the fullback in the I formation. Jones is brought down after a short game by Van Richardson and Matt Smith. Gain around four and a half yards on the play, second down. BPI is really going to have to establish some offense here. Uh, they haven't had an offensive uh, drive since that first drive, the first quarter. And they need to establish some offense if they're going to keep themselves in this game. Second down and six, the clock rolling. Seven and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. The score, the same as it was at halftime, 14-9 Mountaineers. Greenwood out in the flat and has it complete to Alan Thomas. Thomas uh, was on the ground. He only gained one or two yards on the play. And he couldn't, uh, he couldn't go out and run with it anywhere. So it'll be third down at about five. 57,514, the official paid attendance today at Mountaineer Field on homecoming day. You can see Don and Tony talking down on the sideline. Don wants him to do something that he didn't do the last time. They're down in five. Williams goes in motion for the Hokies and back is Greenwood. He's under a rush. Matt Smith can't get him and almost intercepted instead it bounces into the hands of an offensive lineman kent thomas went off a defender right in the hands of kent thomas the left guard who said look what i found and he rumbles for a first down Derek christian was the defender that had a chance to intercept that's one of the wackiest plays i've ever seen looked almost like the miraculous reception back when uh, uh we had the game with the raiders and franco harris that's what you call being alert. I always remember in Canada, a fellow by the name of Mr. Wonderful, Hal Patterson, that used to follow things, and he was a great player because he was always around the ball when it was loose. First and 10 on the 41-yard line. Now Greenwood fumbles the snap and has to fall on it right away. It'll be second and 10. Of course, the rule states that once the ball touches the defender, then it's up in the air. Anybody can grab it and take off with it. And uh, Greenwood delivered the ball. And Christian tried to intercept it, bounced off his hands, and Kent Thomas says, hey, what's this? Did a nice job running. Oh, it looked like a fullback. Didn't yes, he did. <laughs> He's a load. He's a 6'1", 265, senior out of Roanoke. So it's second down and 10. Slot formation right. Now the man in motion is Desmar Becton for Virginia Tech. Rolling left is Greenwood. He's under pressure and has to dump it off. Intended for Maurice Williams. Greenwood was under some heavy pressure from Van Richardson. Rather, that was Richardson on the coverage. He was under heavy pressure by, by uh, Dale McDonald. Also Defensive line did a great job that time. They really did. Anytime you have that kind of pressure, your linebackers and your defensive backs can really do a good job in the backfield, keeping those passes from being completed. Big play coming up for the Mountaineer defense. Fred, third down and 10. They want to stop this Virginia Tech drive right here. Mountaineers dropping off in pass coverage. Play fake as Greenwood flag is down. He throws on the run. He's got his man for a first down. And that is Terrence Howell, the tight end. First reception for him on the day. But hold everything. There's a flag as Greenwood was rolling left. I think it's against BPI. Let's see here. Illegal motion. Well, somebody did something they weren't supposed to on, uh, before the snap of the ball. Somebody was moving at the snap. And that, you know, again, it's a crucial penalty because it's not like it came on an incompleted pass. They had a first down. That's going to take them right back. Yeah, and VPI has done that about Legal four motion. times here today. I think they better get a new referee's mic. You know, once he starts talking, he says about three words and it cuts out. <laughs> Mountaineer enjoying the, you notice he's always on the sunbaked side of the field. He likes to be warm. I don't blame him. Third down and 15. After the penalty, Greenwood straight back to pass. Got the time over the middle. It is almost intercepted. You know, Van Richardson had no way of knowing it. If he lets that ball go, I think Larry Holly would have picked it off. But he didn't know that. He made a great defensive play, and it, Virginia Tech has to punt. He made a great attempt there to intercept that ball, and that's good. So the Mountaineer defense holds, and... David Cox comes in to punt. Tony Johnson back in single safety on the 10-yard line. There's that drill they work on all the time. That's right, the tip oh. drill. 5.46 to go in the third quarter. Mountaineers still up by five. Cox has a little bit of a rush, gets it off. Johnson just calls a fair catch, has no intention of fielding it, and Virginia Tech will down it 
at the four-yard line. That's where the Mountaineers will start when we return to Morgantown in a moment. Our score, West Virginia 14, Virginia Tech 9. Welcome back to now Sundrench, uh, Mountaineer Field in Morgantown. The clouds have been obscuring the sun off and on today, but it is now shining brightly on a late October afternoon. Mountaineers of West Virginia have the ball, but after that excellent punt, backed up to their own four-yard line. First and ten, Rita hands off to Chris Pecan, who barrels ahead for five good yards up to the nine-yard line. That does not look like a spectacular play, Fred, but that really does a lot to get you out of a hole. Five yards down there, Tom, is so important to give yourself a little room. We talked about at the other end how aggressive the defense plays, but the offense needs a little bit of room coming out of there. That five yards gives them a lot of room. Scott Saylor, starting right tackle, is injured on the field. Brian Smiter has already come in to replace him. Well, I'll tell you, another injury. Let's hope it's not serious. He was rolling on the ground. Now he's sitting up on his own and can't see from here where they're working. Let's hope it's not the knee. And while they're checking on Scott Saylor, we'll be back in a moment with a score. West Virginia 14 and Virginia Tech 9. All eyes are on Mountaineer Field this afternoon on homecoming day. Mountaineers trying to go 3-1-1 with a victory here, and it doesn't look good as they take Scott Saylor off the field. A right leg injury, obviously. He is, you would assume, gone for the afternoon. Ryan Smiter, number 79, comes in there to replace him. Smiter is from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He is 6'4", 268-pound freshman. Saylor, a junior. Let's hope it's not that serious. Second down and six. Calvin Phillips goes in motion and the give is the Hollifield. And Hollifield is up near the first down marker, about a yard, yard and a half short. Mark Webb, the nose guard for Tech, brings him down there. The Hollifield, who was a real workhorse in the first half. Pretty good hole, but again, those offensive linemen have just got to hold on to that block a little bit longer. Chuck Joel of helping open that hole for Hollifield. It is third down and one. Krawcheck, the man who cut the touchdown pass in the second quarter, goes in motion to help lead the blocking for Hollifield, who will not get the first down. Oh, Virginia Tech really aroused now on defense. A host of them help bring Hollifield down, including Morgan Roan, defensive end number 89. It'll be a punting situation for Steve Suprick, deep in his own territory against the wind. Well, Steve's going to have to meet the challenge here because the BPI punter did a really a great job, and they learned from that first punt, surrounded the ball, and didn't let it get into the end zone. And then their defense did a great job of holding West Virginia on that series. And this is an excellent punt against the wind. Sends Billy Myers back to his own 42. Myers slips and down. He'll go at the 47. An excellent kick against the wind. Excellent coverage by the Mountaineers. And Virginia Tech starts at their own 47-yard line. Good field position, but... You knew they were going to have that because of where the punt had to come from. Derek Christian made the tackle on the special teams. Well, you notice Steve uh, did a, a different punting job out there that time. You notice that he kept the ball very low to keep it out of the wind so that the wind didn't affect it. It got there a lot quicker than he'd like to have it, but it was a nice punt. First and 10 for Virginia Tech at their own 47-yard line, and on first down... Eddie Hunter gets into Mountaineer territory. The 49 make it the 48-yard line, where Jeff Lucas and David Grant combine to bring him down. Lucas playing today despite a neck injury. Mountaineer is making a bunch of adjustments now in the defensive line. Mike Herzog comes in there. Dale McDonald comes in there. Brad Hunt is now in there. Second down and six. The tailback hunter again, and Freddie Smalls has him for a little or no gain, maybe a yard. Freddie Smalls and Brad Hunt stop that play up rather quickly. The defense stormed that uh, offensive line that time. And really they didn't did. get anything. Now, Bill Dooley seems to be playing this a little close to the best, uh, Fred. Uh, West Virginia has come out a couple of times on first down, thrown for it, gone for it all. You don't see that very much with Virginia Tech. No, they haven't had much offense here at all since that first drive. 
They're down about five yards to go, and the give is to their main man. He's got to, well, no, it's Greenwood who is uh, pressured in the backfield. I thought the ball was given to Eddie Hunter. Greenwood went back to throw instead, and Van Richardson was right in his face and almost caused an interception. Hey, fool me. Yeah, it was a great fake, but uh, here we'll watch it. He does a great job of faking. And there's Van Richardson. Never had a chance. He was lucky to get the ball off. In the pros, that might have been in the grass. It's been close. It's been very close. You've, you've had to make judgments on a few of those. On a few. 2.45 and the clock rolling and Cox is in the punt again for Virginia Tech. Johnson waves for the fair catch. He'll let it bounce at the 15. Takes him out near bounce. Back up to the 25, 26 yard line. You run into a guy in Vegas who's playing with loaded dice. I wonder if they're playing with a loaded football today. <laughs> 14 to 9 the score. 2.36 left in the third quarter. Oh, it's like a yo-yo out there. One time long, one time short. Rather be lucky than good sometimes. And on those punting situations, you always take a bounce like that and be thankful for it. Well, you know, they practice on those bounces. Those aren't really by chance. They try to get that ball, and they work hard on how they release the ball to make it bounce the way they want it. 2.36 left in the third quarter. I'm Tom Mees with Fred Wyatt. A tight one at Morgantown on homecoming as Rita just throws them all out of bounds, intended for Hollifield, but not really as John was covered, and Rita did not want to risk the interception. Good, smart play. He thinks we're going to see some dramatics from one team or the other. I don't think we've seen the last point scored in this game yet. No, Tony's done a masterful job out there this afternoon, I think, in quarterbacking it. Play selection has been pretty good. I don't know whether he's using the audibles or whether they're calling them all from here, but there's the pitch out. And it is Pecan. And Pecan's got the first down. Chris Pecan, Jamel a Jimmy brings him down. Pecan though running hard, and he wasn't going to be stopped until he reached that first down marker. First and ten Mountaineers. Here we go on the run. An exceptional job of running. Good blocking out there. 79 does the, puts a great block on. That's Ryan Schmider, the new tackle that they just put in the freshman from Pittsburgh. Hey, he's going to be hard to get out of the backfield, keeps, Tom. He keeps blocking like that. First and 10. Keeps running like that as far as Pecan goes. And here is Krawczyk for another first down. Inside Hokey territory at the 48. Rita delivered a bullet over the middle. And Brian Krawczyk did not drop it. He looks like a pro quarterback out there today. Now watch this. You're really impressed First, with him, aren't you? I really am. He sets up fundamentally so sound and delivers low. That's the way the pros put it in. Low defender has no chance at all to get over top of him and get the ball. First and ten Mountaineers. They're moving at the Hokie 48-yard line. Here's the delay to Hollifield who slips. Obviously that... Uh, Field is slick for both teams today. We've seen some slippage earlier. This is the first slip in the second half. Mark Webb is credited with the tackle. The second down, second down and almost rolled 10. No gain on that play. Sometimes those backs put tape around their shoes underneath it, and they don't get the effect of the cleats, and I think it, uh, sometimes that causes them to slip a little more than usual. Second and 10. Rita again gets good protection. Out to Basil, the tight end. Basil is out of bounds at the 38-yard line, close to another first down if he doesn't have it. Alan Harris, the strong safety, runs him out. Tony's just executing so well this afternoon, Tom. He's doing it. Here we go. Rolls out to his left. When he sets up and delivers that ball, you're seeing it done the way it's supposed to be done. Take another look at it from Look at that. Through. Look at that delivery right in there. Great catch. Oh, Let's that go. ball come into him. Well, they're measuring now for the first down. Look at Brian Joswiak. He's over there supervising things. He says, we got it. If Brian Joswiak is standing there, I'm not going to tell him he doesn't have it. He's a big person. He is a big person. I learned a long time ago in college, you make friends with a big person real fast. The big persons in the world. <laughs> That's right. So you're my buddy. I don't care who you are, where you're from, what you've done. You are my friend. First and ten. Ball on the 38-yard line. Triple flanker formation now for the Mountaineers. Peacock, the only running back. He gets the pitch out. 
And Pecan makes about four yards all on his own. Mark Webb and Lawrence White make the stop. Pecan didn't have that good of blocking in front of him that time. He did have one man out there, number 67, Matt Racker. He's a brutal runner. He really he is. is. He gets in there and gives it everything he has. Bit of a fire plug, 6'1 and 216. That's pretty broad. He does remind me a lot of Wolf Lee. Second down and five. They get peak on five yards on that carry. Grant as Bell brings in the play, and Reed is going to pass. He's looking for Bell toward the end zone and overthrows him. Carter Wiley was on the coverage, and I think Rita recognized that Grant Bell wasn't going to catch that ball, so he threw it out. A wise move that Carter Wiley has been uh, tough back there today. And there were three defenders around the receiver, so I think it was a good long toss. That'll bring up a third down and five. Now what will Don Nealon and Tony Rita and company pull out of the hat? Here comes Calvin Phillips for the play. First half, Don uh, sent the plays in with the wide receivers. Now he's using the tight end. Phillips in the slot to the right. Quick count. Rita being rushed. Got to get rid of it. Back he is. Taken down at the 44-yard line. Allen Harris, the strong safety on the safety blitz. Safety blitz. They didn't pick him up. He didn't get a chance that time. It's well, a shame. The tight end was in the slot, and you, you lose a lot of blocking that way. See, Tony just gets back, gets set, and has no chance whatsoever. No chance. So again, Virginia Tech comes up big on defense as we're under 30 seconds now in the third quarter, and the score remains 14 to 9. Steve Suprick will see if he can pin him back with a punt. This thing is going to bounce at the goal line into the end zone. It is a touchback. Virginia Tech will take a first and 10 of their own 20. We have 19 seconds left in the third quarter. West Virginia leads it 14 to 9. Suprick was trying to get it just short of the goal line, but can't be perfect every time. I tell you, Coach Dooley should really be uh, encouraged with the defensive play that we've seen last week. What, 150 yards, Syracuse? Right. Today, they have uh, been outstanding, and especially when they needed to be. Well, you know, they made the big play. Uh, West Virginia has gotten a lot more than 150 yards in total offense, but the old saying, they've bent, but they haven't broken, really. They really have done that. First and 10 on the 20. Greenwood has stayed in there the entire second half. The quarterback, a fumble, there it is on the ground. Who's got it? Who's got it? Hunter tried to fall back on it for Virginia Tech. Let's wait for the referee. It is West Virginia football. Yes. Mountaineers have it. Here you see the handoff. Uh, looked like a good exchange he just dropped the ball didn't get it now here's the one as an official you have to be careful not to make the call too quick we always let the strongest one come up with the ball and you'll see west virginia came up with that ball john moses number 74 giving credit for recovering that fumble the mountaineers are in business friend first and ten at the hokey 18 yard line Rita to Hollifield. Hollifield to the five. Touchdown, West Virginia. And the homecoming day crowd loves it. Here we go. Now you're going to watch a nice run. Two lead block out there. Good, two good blocks. Pecan does it. Again. Lays that guy out. What a game he's had today. He really has. That's something the fans don't notice too much, but the coaches will in the film. I'll tell you, he's going to grade high in there because he's made some blocks, and Hollifield's taken advantage of it, and that was a great run and a great score. Now that's John Hollifield's second touchdown run of the day. He had the first one in the first quarter. Bowman in to attempt the extra point, and it is good. With one second left in the third quarter, the Mountaineers have pulled out to a 21-9 lead. You know, I love the way they did it. They get the break in the first play, put the crusher on. That's really got to get the Virginia Tech people thinking now. One of the things that I noticed uh, in spring practice was that, and in, earlier this fall, that Pecan, uh, Chris was in there all the time. As a matter of fact, I think in one period of time for two weeks, he was the only fullback. So 
He was really tired out. Well, watch this. Good lead block, 67 and 39. Good block. They hold him on the line, and there's oh. the block. Hollifield sets it up and goes in for the score. He just wiped out the strong safety, Alan Harris, with a roll block there, yep. and that was it. And Hollifield has about 99% of the time today has done a tremendous job in setting up the block. A couple of times when the block was already set, he didn't make a good cut, but he's an excellent runner and uses the blockers and helps set up the blocks very well. All right, Charlie Bauman in there to kick off after that Mountaineer touchdown. This will be barring penalty, the final play of the third quarter. And it is Hunter at the two-yard line. Hunter at the 15, the 20, and he's down at the 23-yard line. That's where Virginia Tech will take over. But the deficit is larger for the Hokies, and the Mountaineers are on top. At the end of the third quarter, the score, West Virginia 21, Virginia Tech 9, back with the fourth quarter in a moment. 39-yard line, Fred Smalls in the tackle. I'm going to give Smalls some credit today. He had a very tender ankle, and he's played the entire game. We were told he would definitely not start. He did, and he's been in there almost all the way. Well, Freddie's tough, and he likes to play, and the good ones play hurt. And he is a good one. Make no mistake about that. First and 10 for Virginia Tech over the 39. Now Tech is in a position, Fred, where they, they're going to have to throw a ball a little bit more than they'd planned. They've got to generate some offense here. They give it to Maurice Williams, and Williams picks up a quick five or six yards. Up to the 45-yard line, Derek Christian and Brad Hunt on the tackle. That'll bring up, oh, second down and call it four yards. Good lead block by 49. Actually, Maurice steps on the man and loses his balance, or he might have gone for a lot more yardage. That was the fullback, Ernie Jones, on that block for Virginia Tech, number 49. Second down and four. Greenwood on the play. Fake is under pressure, has to get rid of it, intending it for Maurice Williams, but he had uh, Van Richardson right in his face. Good defense, aggressive defense. Derek Christian was over there on the coverage. Derek's uh, had a, a good game this afternoon. Been around that ball a lot. That's what you got to have with those linebackers. Watch the hit that Green would say. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Call it the glamour position, huh, Fred? Whoa. <laughs> They're down in four. Greenwood rolling right. Has a man open, but underthrows him. Man with Steve Johnson, reserved tight end. And the Virginia Tech Hokies will have to punt again. Pressure. The defensive line is pressuring. Yeah, good. Good defensive play there by the linebacker. Believe that Got was his Christian hand on the ball. Yeah, Derek Christian. Yeah. Been around the ball all day. Cox back to punt. Tony Johnson standing in single safety at the 15-yard line. Cox almost has it blocked. Boy, he takes a long time setting that up. Tony Johnson calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 20. We have flags. They did not, I believe, Fred, give him enough room to handle that punt. Maybe uh, they uh, think they have that rule in college. What is it, five yards? Oh, uh, you got to give him five yards, uh, I believe. Three to five yards. Uh -huh. They were right on his doorstep. That's, uh, I'll tell you, he's a good punter. Uh, the He's got the... Uh, Cox for, uh, for yes. sec. Good height. You see, uh, at the end of three quarters, uh, 280 total yes. yards, surpassing what Syracuse got last week by 130. So the Mountaineers are starting to open it up a little bit. Well, your point is well taken. Cox, uh, that was a nice high punt. His coverage was down there. Only trouble was it was down there too close. Got too close. So it's first and 10 for Tony Rita in the Mountaineer offensive unit. 13.58 to go in this ball game. Mountaineers looking to go 3-1-1. One, and one. We're taking a week off and heading up to Chestnut Hill, Mass. to take on Boston College on the 19th. Whistles all over the place. It was not a delay of game. Could have been a dead ball foul. It is offside on West Virginia. That yeah, was an illegal motion. That was Tom Hamilton. And, of course, he, I think it was just shifted over there last week. He's a normally an offensive tackle and has just moved into that position. 
A dead ball foul. So the five yards is marched back to the 20-yard line. It'll be first down still, but it is first and 15. Penalties today, lots of them. Seven for the Hokies, six for the Mountaineers, totaling up to an even 100 yards if you add the two penalty totals together. Rita intended for Robert White. Excellent coverage out there by Billy Myers, the right cornerback. That ball's in the air. Both people have a right to it, and he played it real well. Tony took a pretty good hit that time. That uh, defensive lineman got in on him pretty good. Rochick brings in a play from Don Nealon on second and 15. Can't get careless here. You're up 21-9, but you don't want to turn the ball over. This even your territory with this much time left on the clock. Rita just keeps Pecan in there to block it. Loads of time over the middle. Klotzik has it first and 10 for the Mountaineers at the 40-yard line. Brian Klotzik, Carter Wiley made the tackle. Klotzik's having himself a day. Well, you know, he reminds me a lot of uh, Steve Largent out there at Seattle. When they need a, to get it to somebody, they throw the ball to him. And you watch, this is a tough catch. A great pass again, but you talk about a tough catch in the middle, in traffic. Well, the uh, two Pittsburgh area boys hook up. Reader from Mount Lebanon, Krawczyk from Aliquippa. First and ten. The pitch out to Pecan. Pecan's got some blocking initially, but then is brought down, and we're going to have a penalty flag. The tackle made by Paul Nelson, but a flag came down during that tackle. I think we might have holding. Out in front on that play was Matt Racker, the 67 reserve center. He was leading the blocker. Yeah. And it's holding against West Virginia, 10 yards. I think Brian Josriak had the hold on that. You know, in college ball, they do something that I like. And the pros, and these guys are getting paid big money in the pros, so they name the number. Fine, they ought to be able to take it. In college, though, you know, we're dealing with amateurs here. You don't want to have the crowd getting on any one guy. They just say offense to this or defense. I think that's good, the differentiation. It really is. Yeah, it's not necessary for all of us in the media to know what the, the number is. <laughs> it, it, it's, you know, if you find out, fine, but there's no sense announcing it to 60,000 people. Rita... And incomplete, intending it for Grantis Bell. Bell was really racked up by Carter, Carter Wiley and uh, could not be blamed for dropping that ball. He had it momentarily. I'll tell you, those are some tough hits out there, but if, if we're going to win some games here that we've got coming up, we're going to have to make some of those catches. Yeah, well, Donham have to make some of those catches. That's the point well taken. Second down and 19. Rita again over the middle. The ball is tipped. Ball is tipped by one of the onrushing offense or defensive linemen. Didn't catch the number, but it'll be third down and 19. I believe maybe it was Rainer Coleman who got in there. It was a shame because he, the, he was open. It looked like it was just going to be a nice drop off. There's Scott Saylor with that big ice bag around his right ankle. I'm glad to say it's not the knee. It's an ankle injury. Looks like a sprained ankle. Let's hope that's all it is. Yeah. Obviously, he will not be back the rest of the day. So, Tony Rita got himself in a fix here. Third down and 19. You know what those tech defensive linemen are going to do. But he still gets good protection. Going down the sideline for White. The ball is picked off. Picked off by Carter Wiley who's had one heck of a day back there. We have a penalty flag on the play, and Wiley is brought down at the West Virginia 35-yard line. Penalty flag at the 39, but the, the interception will stand. Well, Tony, of course, was hit as he was passing the ball. You'll see it right here. He goes back, he sets up. Just as he's releasing the ball, it gets hit in the arm and causes that ball to come up short. A break for West Virginia, Fred, clipping on the return of the interception by Virginia Tech. And this will march the football all the way back into Tech territory at the 47-yard line. Say you cannot have the, the penalties like that and expect to beat a major college team. You just can't. Now, even when you do good, you do bad, right? It's good to have the ball, but I'll tell you, I'd rather have it in, their ter in West Virginia's territory than where they've got it now. 14th penalty flag we've seen today. 
So at least in that respect, it's a lot like the Pittsburgh game of a week ago when there were penalty flags all over the field. First and 10 for Virginia Tech at their own 47-yard line. Becton is in motion, now comes back the other way on the reverse. Look at this, wide receiver reverse, and Becton's got a first down to the 40-yard line. Desmar Becton. I think you like Desmar, don't you? <laughs> I, I like that name. <laughs> uh, here we go. Good fake. Now the reverse. Actually, there wasn't even any block thrown in there. It was, no. It sort of got in between some people. But it was a nice run, well-executed play. Willie Edwards made the stop, but not before the first down at the West Virginia 39-yard line. Greenwood to Maurice Williams, and Williams is down to the 45. The second down, Matt Smith and Derek Christian with a stop. Tempers flaring a bit back there. And a flag on the play. Personal foul, West Virginia. This is not going to help things at all. Now you get into those discussions that come out there when uh, people are trying to jockey each other verbally and then you end up with a shove or and then uh, ends up costing you 15 yards. Well, this takes it down inside the 20 all the way down to the 18 yard line or 19 yard line. What did I say? Still a lot of time left. You don't want to turn it over to a good team. The interception, a mistake, and here's West, uh, Virginia Tech knocking on the door. First and 10, 19 yard line. Greenwood rolling left, got the time for the sideline, but his receiver was out of bounds. No catch, it'll be second down. Intended receiver was Terrence Howell, the tight end. The sad thing about that penalty is it was a dead ball foul. No reason for it, and that's one you could avoid. Some of the others, sometimes you're, you know, you're aggressive. You're trying to do something either to stop somebody or make a block. That one is there's just no excuse for it. Well, it was either one of two fellows, either Lockwood or Larry Holly for West Virginia, that the foul was called on. They were there when the flag was dropped. Be that as it may, it's second and ten. Protect West Virginia defense has to come up big here. They lead it, but it's not a, that big a lead at 21 to 9 with 12-17 left. Greenwood got all sorts of time, but he has to throw it out of bounds as uh, Becton was the receiver. He had time, but all of a sudden, Derek Christian was right in his face, and he had to unload it. Derek right. has been magnificent out there today. He really has. Yes, he has. It'll bring up a third down and ten. Tom Tarciani has one field goal today for Virginia Tech. That one just made it over the crossbar in the first period. Big draw play. Greenwood is going to be sacked. Making the 25-yard line. I believe they're going to call him down there. In any case, the pass is incomplete. Dale McDonald had him back at the 25. Are they going to call it incomplete? They're going to call it incomplete. Yeah, and I think they probably uh, may have had an intentional grounding here. Let's watch it. No place to go. No place to go. Yeah, intentional grounding. Well, there was no flag on that play. They're just going to simply call it incomplete. That's the, again a judgment call. Well, it, it's a really tough play on the referee because he's supposed to, in the, the scheme of things out there, he's got to watch the quarterback. Sometimes he can't make that call because he doesn't see it. In that case, he was looking and he was going in a different direction. Well, no field goal here for Bill Dooley. He's going for it on fourth down, fourth and ten. Maurice Williams in motion, and we're going to have flags now. Flags all over the place. Jim Davey, offensive tackle on the left side, got up like he couldn't hear or didn't know where he was at. He was missed the signal. Yeah. It's going to be five yards, no play, and it's going to be fourth down and 15. The official call is encroachment. I'll tell you what, it's early in the ball game, still with 12 minutes to go. I'm not sure I wouldn't have gone for a field goal. If you get two field goals, now you're back in the game. Touchdown wins it for you. I think Dooley will be second guess. Now, see, I think he's going for it now, well, yeah. Maybe... Maybe they did that on purpose, too, to give him a better angle, although I doubt it. I don't think so. 
Yeah, 40, I think he thought about it again. Marciani, 41 yarder. It is going to be no good. Way short. Way short. About seven or eight yards short. And the five yards cost him. So the defense holds in Morgantown. 12 minutes to go in the game. The score, the Mountaineers 21, the Hokies 9. Back in just a moment. Welcome back to Morgantown as we are getting late in the homecoming game of 1985. West Virginia leading Virginia Tech 21 to 9. A big defensive series and the Mountaineer offense takes over first and 10 at its own 24 yard line. Robert White goes in motion. The give is to Hollifield. Hollifield dragged down after a two yard gain. Morgan Roan, junior defensive end, have been very active today from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Not a bad place to call home. Second down and eight. The defense, I think, is sort of coming into their own today. They've been a force out there, and uh, uh, it's. I think it's. Uh, they've played this afternoon like they have been expected to play uh, this year, and and uh, are doing really a good job in in uh, holding DPI. Great deal of intensity on the on the Mountaineer defense, no doubt about that. Here's Hollifield on the delay. John Hollifield has got two touchdowns today. About a yard short of the first down is Carter Wiley. And Eric Hayes in the area. Wiley will be credited with the tackle. Dwight Osbrook's also in it. Here we go. John gets that ball. He's so clever when he gets that ball. And a little extra move in there, and he picks up an extra two and three yards. He even used the referee for a screen. That, that is clever. <laughs> Third down and one. Reed on the quick drop out to the sidelines. He's got his man. That's Grantis Bell for the first down. Possession type of pass to the sideline. First and ten Mountaineers at the 38. That pass is uh, like a short uh, drive into the line. Uh, football's become so sophisticated. They used to maybe run for that play, and now they pass for those two or three yards. Got to catch those, and he made a nice catch for the first down. First and ten, Mountaineers on the 38-yard line. After that missed field goal attempt by Tarciani of Virginia Tech. And the win was way short. It's still 21-9. Hollifield slipping one block. Boy, he's a shifty character. He's over the 40, the 42 before Mark Webb brings him down. Tell you what, he's shrewd out there. <laughs> he gets those, uh, puts some moves on some people out there. Part of the sun-baked crowd of over 57,000 today. Tell you finish up your first five games three one and one not bad you get a week off to get some momentum before you hit the real iron of your schedule in a couple of weeks rest up and right heal those wounds second down and seven Rita to the right intended for Bell but he underthrew that and I think he did it on purpose because he saw Bell was covered by Billy Myers and didn't want to take a shot now he do not much room out there they will bring up a third down and seven. Well, Rita has done a fine job today, and Don Nealon, although he said before the game he would see both Rita and Tally as the mascots get together on the sideline, he also said that if Rita was having a very good day, that he would stay with him. And he has had a good day, and he's been true to his word. That's right. Well, you don't change when you've got to roll like that, like the old Jerry Reed thing, when you're hot, you're hot. That's right. And he's hot today. Saw Scott Saylor on the bench a moment ago. He has the ice pack off that right ankle now, and he's being taped up. Maybe we will see more of him today. Rita got all sorts of time. Now has to scramble. Look out. Oh, he took a heck of a hit. He completes the pass, I believe. No, no. Bounced it in there to Basil. Oh, Tony Rita really took a hit by number 83. I tell you, 83 has really been tough. Paul Nelson. Yeah, yeah he's been uh, every place today, and he laid a pretty good hit on him. That's when you find out what kind of character you have back there as a quarterback. He really sacrificed himself, and because of the rush, he bounced the pass in there, so Subrick's going to have to punt it away on fourth down. Gets it a good high spiral. Myers doesn't have a prayer catching up to this one. It's bouncing at the five. They're going to down it at the four. Great job by the West Virginia special teams. Tony Johnson is back there to down it. An amazing punt. Oh. Looked like it was going to... Okay, we'll be back to talk about that amazing punt in a moment, Fred. 9.29 to go in the ball game. Our score, Mountaineers 21, Virginia Tech 9.
Crowd urging that defense on as Steve Suprick did another great job with that punt. No, he had to win with him for everybody to get the ball to bounce the right way and gave his team a chance to dump. Meanwhile, Greenwood is rolling right. Got to throw it almost every down now. He's going long. He's got a receiver out there. That's Beckton. But he overthrows him. Travis Curtis on the coverage. Yeah, Steve looked like he was going to slice that ball out of bounds, and the ball looked like he had a double chance, and the ball took a bounce and just stopped right there. Great coverage by the uh, uh, the punting unit. Tony Johnson got down there and covered that ball and kept it from going into the end zone. That's a great weapon. Many fans don't realize what a weapon the kicking game can be. Like a 12th man out there. Oh, they'll win a lot of games with that kicking. Second down and 10. From the own four-yard line for the Hokies, Greenwood has some time, gets it out to his tight end Terrence Howell, and Howell is brought down near the 10-yard line by Fred Smalls. Short of the first down by about five yards. It'll be third down and five. Good protection for Greenwood here. Good protection. Steps up, throws the ball. Receiver makes a nice move, picks up a couple of three yards. Fred Small bulldogging him to the turf. Now, main thing we want to do on defense is not to allow any long gainer here or somebody to break away on us. 8.46 to go in the game. Clock running. They're down in five. Mountaineers lead at 21-9. And here goes Matt Smith. And he forces Maurice Williams to slip back at the four-yard line. Well, Smith didn't throw him down, but he forced him to lose his momentum and his balance. And that's just as good as a sack. Defense has been grand today. Sure has. They really have. And now David Cox will be back to punt again. And Tony Johnson, who downed the punt a moment ago, is back in single safety standing at his own 45-yard line. And look where Cox is, right at the back of the end zone. Mountaineers are sending eight men after him, but he gets it away. Short punt, and it is covered, covered up there by the up man, that is Willie Edwards, at the Virginia Tech 35-yard line. So... Edwards, uh, that punt coming into the wind, making it tough to handle, covers it, and that's where the Mountaineers will start. We'll be back with more Mountaineer football in just a moment. Our score, West Virginia 21, Virginia Tech 9. <laughs> 10, West Virginia, and the give on first down is the Hollifield. Hollifield stopped after a game around two. Rainier Coleman and Morgan Roan. In there to get him. West Virginia just needs to drive the ball. Now, here's where you really need to have that good running attack. Yep. Hold on to the ball, run the clock out, but you've got to be making those first downs. you got to drive, be able to drive whatever distance you need to get that score. West uh, Virginia Tech's really up against it. They allow another three or six points here, and I think they could say this game is history for them. Mountaineer fans will take that just fine. Uh-huh. Rita. Out to Krawcik, he's had a good day. Krawcik's got the first down. Oh, he was stopped about a yard short. He said, no way you're going to bring me down. And Eric Hayes and Jam Jamel Adjami did, but Krawcik's got a first down. Watch this, Tony. Now he just backs out of there, stops, throws the ball. And there's our man, West Virginia Steve Largent. <laughs> You're going to start something here, Colin. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, that's, uh, you couldn't pay him a greater compliment that's because right. there's not anybody any better than Steve is. It is first down and 10. We've got to have flags, and I believe there was movement by the tight end on the right side for West Virginia. Some sort of movement on the right side of that line. Dead ball foul. You know, we've seen uh, a little bit different setup here this afternoon. West Virginia's offense, they haven't shifted a lot of people around. They've stayed with that backfield. Uh, they've really gotten into the flow of things, well coordinated, and uh, and they had some have had some great results. Sure have. Well, start. What is the difference between a coachman and offsides on the offensive line? Uh, offsides is when they line up in the zone, and coachman is when they go across and touch another player. Well, Tommy Gray is not encroaching, but he's leaning forward for a couple of yards down to the 18-yard line. Lawrence White this makes is, the tackle. This is Tommy's time of the game when you need to have somebody that gives you gets those tough yards. He's a tough yard or a tough yard runner out there. 
And he's been carrying in plays and shuttling back and forth all day. The crowd seems to sort of think, well, we got this thing wrapped up 21-9. Not yet. You need another six points to really put this one in the bank. Granis Bell goes in motion. Rita over to Hollifield. Hollifield is stopped for almost no gain at the 20-yard line. Morgan Roan and Dw Dwight Osbrooks with a stop. I'm going to tell you what. Pecan got another block. The guy completely off his feet. He has been outstanding out there this afternoon. When that happens, they call it a pancake. And the guy's yes. flat on his back. Freilich used to call him at a pit. He is assaulting the defense out there. <laughs> It is third down and nine from the 20-yard line. Read on the play fake to Hollifield, the reverse to Robert White. He's got some blocking. White to the 15 and stumbles at the 10. Oh, it appeared for a moment like he could go all the way. But he stumbles at the 10-yard line. That is still enough for a first down for the Mountaineers. They're moving the chains. Great call at a great time, Fred. Yes, it was. Nice play. Unfortunately, Robert had four blockers out in front of him, and he runs into the, his own man. Get out of my way, he's saying. Yeah, but Robert's got to watch. Robert could see the guy, the blocker didn't know where he was. He was waiting for three guys. He did a good job. First and goal at the 10 to give us the Hollifield. Hollifield barrels into the 7, maybe the 6-yard line. Jamel uh, Jimmy with the tackle. The man that... Um, White ran into on that reverse the center Dave Griffin 6'4", 260 in South Charleston that would uh, that would tend to stop you out there yes. if you ran into him yes it would there's a great story Dave came in as probably second or third center in the year and then uh, worked his way worked hard in there and is, is really developing into a fine offensive center has some movement by Virginia Tech to give us the Hollifield. Hollifield inside the five to the three-yard line. Mark Webb, number 76, the nose guard brings him down. Let's wait and see what the penalty is all about, if there is one. Thought I saw some flags out there. Okay, here we go. No, no flag. Tough yardage. John's get. you know, we've uh, they've run off about four minutes already in this uh, drive, Tom, and that's what it takes. Four Hold 16. on to the ball. 4-16 and running. That's right. Yeah, Demoralizes the defense, doesn't it? It really does. And it is, and it also gives that offense that sort of thing that they need to know that they can take that ball and run that yardage off. Third and goal from the three. Rita wants to throw, but he slips back at the eight-yard line, and the ever-present Morgan Roan will get credit for the tackle because he was the man that obliterated the sun in front of Tony Rita. Charlie Bauman will come in to try and tack on three more. Ball is back at the 8. This will be a 25-yard attempt. He'll kick it from the 15 plus the 10 of the end zone, and Charlie will have an angle to the left. Charlie trying to keep up the tradition of excellent place kicking here, left by Paul Woodside. Big shoes to fill, but he uh, really has a fine reputation and has done a good job. It's plenty long enough, and it's good. So the Mountaineers... Move on out to a 24 to 9 lead with 3.19 left to go in this football game. And very frankly, that should about lock this game up, I would think. I think so. I think West Virginia showed a lot of great concentration out there on that drive, Tom, and holding on to the ball, running the clock off, and they get the three points and, and run five minutes off of the clock while they're doing it. Well, we talked before the game, it was not only important for West Virginia to win, but to play well in winning. Some people would say in the Duke win, the last game that they did win, they didn't really play that well, but they escaped with a two-point win. I think they have played well. The defense certainly, and I think I think there's the offense has played maybe their well certainly their best game of the year. Well, I think they were consistent out there today, Tom. They were able to do some things, uh, uh, cause some things to happen. And I don't think they've been able to cause much to happen at all here in the last couple three weeks. Uh, their offensive backfield and well, the whole offensive team I was really had really been impressed with out there. I'll tell you, I love uh, Pecan and I love Hollifield and Tony is just he just he's the man out there and that's what they got to have. They've got to have the man and he's the man out there this afternoon. And the quarterback situation, no matter who it is, the old saying it: if you have two leaders, you really have none. There have been some coaches that have gotten by with a two quarterback system and been successful, but not very many. 
Now, there haven't been very many great teams that it's used to. They get somebody that takes over, and that's what Tony did today. But his offensive line has allowed him to, do, to be able to do that. And uh, I'm sure that um, Don Nealon is thrilled to have them all back working together. Again, although Saylor did get hurt in this game, apparently it's not that that much of an injury. And, of course, Brian Krawczyk, Flint and has had a heck of a day. Yeah, I like him. Uh, he's sort of like Chris. Uh, you see people like that, and if you've, if you've played, you know how important, you know how hard those guys work, and everybody says, well, there's people with more talent and this and that. But I'm going to tell you what. When it gets tough out there, I want those two guys playing with me. It's so windy out there now that Bauman has to have some help holding the ball in the tee. And uh, Darren Fulton is doing just that. Bauman gets the kick away. And Eddie Hunter has it at the five-yard line. He's got a, a bit of a seam for a moment. Squeezes through there to the 32-33 yard line. Willie Edwards on the tackle. But time is definitely not the ally of the Virginia Tech Hokies, who look like they're going to get out of their fourth defeat in five games. Well, Virginia Tech, of course, they've had some fine teams in recent memory. A couple of years ago, I think it was 83, they went 9-2. and two, right? And were never even invited to a bowl game. A lot of people felt that was an injustice. They've had some very fine teams, down there. Yes, they have. Uh, and uh, Coach Dooley uh, does a great job. You know, he's, he has 100 and some wins. You don't just get those being uh, average. Here's a pass out in the flat to Steve Ellsworth. Goes out about the 41-yard line. Defense is putting great pressure on. <laughs> a little bit of extracurricular hitting there in the sidelines. Pick up of eight, though, as the people stream towards the exit to Mountaineer Field with 3.10 to go. Second down and two. Greenwood rolling right. And has his man out of bounds. That's Scott Ryder. He has the first down, and it'll stop the clock with 3.05 to go. There was a great catch. Scott Ryder coming in off the bench. His first catch of the day is a senior. 5.10 from Elizabethtown, Tennessee. So it's first and 10 on the 45-yard line. Greenwood going to throw it on every down now, and it passes, picked off, picked off by West Virginia, and returned inside the 45-yard line by Robert Pickett, the freshman out of Miami, Florida. Pickett on the tip drill, picked it off. Well, here we go again. When you have that pressure, tip, bad hands, tip, that's the, the drill they work on all the time. And here they were worried about having to play that uh, freshman, and uh, he did a good job out there. Sure did, and John Talley is coming into the game now at quarterback, as you see, getting some congratulations, Pickett on the sideline. Talley takes over, first and 10, West Virginia on the Virginia Tech 43. Talley keeps the ball himself. John Talley, an excellent athlete in his own right, is down to the 36-yard line. Billy Myers, Nolan Hazard. Help bring him down. I think a lot of people are rooting for Tally to come in and have a good last couple of minutes here. Yeah. Well, John uh, adds another dimension out there, the, and he's running that ball, and BPI is not ready to have somebody like a quarterback run the ball on him. You know, John is a pretty big guy, 6'6", 219. You can see his stats so far this year. Second down and three from the 36 as Tally picked up seven. And a fumble on the play, but covering it at the 35-yard line. And I believe that is Craig Taylor, number 20 in there, as the reserves come in for Don Neal. Now Chris Pecan's still in there. The Taylor fumble, recovered his own fumble, and it's third and one. 2.03 left to go in this ball game. Grant is fell the top of the screen. Keith Wynn also in the ball game is split, and now we have players from both sides jumping off probably going to be against West Virginia Ed Hill was the West Virginia man who jumped off and it's illegal procedure it will be a five yard penalty so the Mountaineers Fred go on a road trip of some proportion they have a week off and then they go to BC Penn State and, Nate, and uh, Virginia if they can pull off that trifecta that'll be doing something 
I'll tell you what, those are some tough ones. This is a great way to go into an off week. Yeah, it really is. You know that Boston College will be laying for West Virginia, and you know Penn State will after last year. Joe Paterno had never lost to West Virginia until last year. What a thrilling game that was. His tally tries to run for the first down. He's horse collared two or three yards short. The clock continues to run, though, with a minute 25 to go. Rainer Coleman and Kevin Lathan bring him down. West Virginia has controlled the uh, ball about seven out of the last eight minutes of this quarter, and the great teams can do that. It's very encouraging to watch them out there this afternoon. Don Nealon's going to go for them. Fourth down, why not? You want to get a quarterback some work? It's fourth and five, a minute to go in the game, and you've got it locked up, so let's see what he can do. Hill, the tight end, switches from left to right. The give is to Tommy Gray, and Gray is close to the first down, although I don't know if he got it. Victor Jones makes the tackle for Virginia Tech. And he is short by about a yard, so the Hokies will take over. 49 seconds left to go in the game. Ran a little more of that clock off. Virginia Tech will be in action next week. They'll be home against William & Mary. This game has been produced by our executive producer, Mike Parsons. Our producer director in the truck, Nick Smith. Technical director, John Ungermach. Audio, Alex Gavula. Electronic graphics by Alan Hercules. Meanwhile, Virginia Tech trying to put some points on the board, brings in another substitute quarterback who almost comes up with a big play. In there and out, uh, quarterback for Virginia Tech. I'm trying to pick out this boy's number. Mark Chapman. Mark Chapman is in there. Number, number 16. Rather, Eric Chapman. Eric Chapman, a quarterback. Comes in to throw one incomplete pass, and then he leaves the ball game. Steve Johnson was the intended receiver. And in the game now is Jeff Roberts. So you've got your fourth line quarter. This is when it really becomes fun announcing a game. They stop putting in the shock troops, <laughs> and some of the guys aren't even listed on your roster. Roberts come in, and he throws a completed pass. He rifled Dude. that ball pretty good. Scott Ryder made the catch. 39 seconds left as Ryder goes out of bounds. They're down about four yards short of the first down. Trying to say Virginia Tech will be at home next week against William and Mary, a team that they, I would think, figure to beat. Although you can't take anything for granted anymore. Roberts oh, gets it out to Ellsworth. Ellsworth has it at the 45-yard line. That was Chapman, the quarterback. Chapman gets it out to Ellsworth. I guess they're, guess they're shuttling in quarterbacks. The clock stops again at 34 seconds left. Tom, I think West Virginia got that performance that you talked about uh, prior to the, the start of the game today that they needed to have. They sure did, and they got it. There's no doubt about that. Jeff Roberts back in at quarterback as they're going to shuttle him in the rest of the game, I guess. Bill Dooley seeing what these young men can do. Roberts rolling right. Under pressure, got to get rid of it, and he escapes for a moment. Throws, and is almost intercepted. Almost intercepted for the Mountaineers by Joe Technip. Or make that Dave Lockwood. I'm sorry, Dave Lockwood. Technip not with the team anymore. Good pressure by the defense. But that, that young quarterback is uh, can move around pretty good out there. Yeah, he's uh, got some speed. It's second down and ten. They'll mark it on the other hash mark now. Eric Chapman is back in at quarterback. 24 to 9. Tech scored on its first series of plays on a 53 yard touchdown to Beckton. Has added only a field goal since then. They missed the extra point on the touchdown. Chapman going long. He's got a man on the sidelines, but also over there for West Virginia is Lockwood on the coverage. Donald Snell was the intended receiver, and 19 seconds are left now. End of that last play. Good defense. Ball overthrown a little bit, but the defender, Lockwood, uh, did a good job, was right there with him. This is a tough time of the game, Tom. We talk about those two quarterbacks from VPI. Game, they can't win, and they've got to go in and still try to perform well. Yep. Third down and ten, but it's a very important time for these young men. Roberts rolling right, got an open receiver, but overthrows him, and oh, we're going to have a penalty here. 
Scott Ryder, the receiver, and he was in midair and was nailed, but it was well after the ball went by, and the official felt it was excessive force. First yeah. foul. And if the ball is over his head, he has no chance to to catch the ball. Then it's a uh, is here we go. Let's watch this. Well, there is. Yeah, that was a good call. There's no sense in that. Dave Lockwood. You get in a you get in a crucial part of the game or a game that's close, and you do something like that. Those are just uncalled for. Now, we've had about three of those the last three in a row we've had like that. Well, that's maybe the only negative you can take out of today is the penalty situation, which has hurt both teams, but that's yeah. something certainly that Don Nealon will talk to his team about. 14 seconds left for the record. West Virginia going to win it. Only a matter of count now. Virginia Tech just trying to put some more points in the board, and Chapman is nailed. Tony Johnson just came in and planted him back at the 44-yard line, and that'll be the last play of the ball game. Let's take a look at it once again. What a way to end the game, Fred. Yeah, Man. Tony, oh my. So the West Virginia Mountaineers have run their record to 3-1-1 one, and one as we take a look at the hit by 16 on 16. Tony that is Johnson a safety blitz. That sure is. And what a way to put a punctuation mark on this one. The final score from Mountaineer Field in Morgantown, West Virginia 24, Virginia Tech 9. So as a happy crowd of over 57,000 file out of Mountaineer Field in Morgantown, they're happy because the Mountaineers have prevailed, run their record to 3-1-1. They'll have a week off before they take on the B.C. Eagles a couple of weeks up in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. The final score once again, as Tony Rita had a good day on offense and the defense played well from beginning to end, West Virginia dominating Virginia Tech 24 to nine. Promotional consideration provided by PM Enterprises. Accommodations provided by the Holiday Inn of Morgantown. Today's game was brought to you by Magnet Bank, the right bank in the right place at the right time. By your Mountaineer land, Chrysler Plymouth dealers. The competition knows it's the team to beat. By Hex Discount Stores, serving West Virginia for over 25 years. By Flat Top Insurance Agency, America's energy agency. By Frito-Lay, the makers of the new cheddar-flavored and sour cream-flavored Ruffles. By Stroh's, family brewers for over 200 years. And by Rich Equipment Company, home of quality Komatsu earth-moving equipment in West Virginia. Today's game was produced in cooperation with WVU Educational Telecommunications. This has been a Mountaineer Sports Network presentation.